hello 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 how are we doing tonight i hope you are having a fantastic week so far we are here live with you in the action lab on a wednesday night we are live on twitch and we have all of our podcast platforms that we are going to be posting this to as well so wherever you love your podcast we will be on there streaming and posting and all the good stuff uh marie Thank you so much. A couple gifted tiered tier one subs for Belly and Jalen. Thank you, thank you for Let's all go. of that love. We're not even live yet, and we got the the air horns going off for all of those gifted subs. Thank you, Marie. Appreciate it. I can finally do it. She says. Um. Yeah. Absolutely great week. Short week. Uh, we have our Memorial Day weekend. And, you know, it, 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 we're just getting into the swing of the NHL conference finals here. And we are have a good one going on tonight. So we are going to go into that first and foremost. We're going to check that out. We're going to talk a little bit of the other game that happened, i.e. the Avalanche and how crazy their game was with the Edmonton Oilers yesterday. Just throwing that out there. I mean, if you like scoring, let's just say that you enjoyed yesterday's game. Just put it out there. We also have a lot of prep, Scotty, for game one of the NBA Finals. AMX, first time. Hi, let's go. What's up? I'm going to call you AMX if that works. Um, <laughs> AMX. What's going on? Let's go. How you doing? Where are you uh, from and who's your team? like to get to know you a little bit. And McDuggets, are we checking this real casual golf game out? Oh, I'm like glued to this. <laughs> <laughs> Mahomes is dialed, by the way, Chris. I don't, I'm sure you haven't watched any of this. Mahomes is dialed. And somehow, some way, this has led me to believe that the Chiefs are have to be the favorites for the Super Bowl because this dude's the alpha male out on the course right now. Like he's... Josh Allen, Josh Allen may not ex as well exist as his teammate, but they started two down right off the top, and now they're up a, up one. And uh, Mahomes is just absolutely dominating Rodgers. Brady's been fun. Brady's commentary has been fun. I'll give Brady credit. Uh, Rodgers has been his arrogant self like normal, um, but hasn't really backed it up. And no, I, like I like Josh Allen as a play. Like mm, he, he, you don't get alpha out of him, at least on the golf course, maybe because he can't hit the ball straight. That might be why Chris, but no alpha from Josh Allen right now. <laughs> um, he is, he is basically the subject of, of Patrick Mahomes. He, you know, Mahomes continues to be Josh Allen's daddy, even though they're on the same team. I but, mean, uh, anyway, yeah, I am going off Amex, Ohio, love the Browns, Guardians and Cavs. Nice. Okay. Indians nice. fans going to be in heaven. 
Indians fan's been looking for a partner in crime. You can't say Indians fan, Chris. That's his screen name, though. It's his screen name, though. (laughs) Well, you'll fit right in at home here, Amex. Thank you for popping in and being a part of the stream. Your Cavs are going to be looking good in the next year. They got a nice little talented core that they're building out there in Cleveland. So you love that. Amex, Uh, where where do you fall real quick? Where do you fall on the whole Deshaun Watson thing? Where do you fall? How do you feel about Deshaun Watson as your quarterback moving forward? Just curious. By the way, Deshaun Watson was in the news. I actually, you know, go figure. I forget to build one graphic all night. So we're going to have to talk about that on the side. We'll just, we'll just do that without having the graphics. But yeah, Deshaun Watson was in the news. We'll get into that. We have a lot of other top stories that are going on. We got a lot of NBA news. We got a lot of you know, rumblings going on with trades and different things happening in the NBA. So I can't wait to dive into some of those. So that'll be fun. And then also going to uh, talk about what else was on the docket tonight. There was something else that we were going to talk about. A little, little golf. We'll touch in on. I didn't even, I forgot actually, which is bad, but the U S men's national team had a friendly tonight, Chris against Morocco. Yep, uh, they were I mean, up three one, I think, last time I checked. If I wasn't mistaken, three, no, they they won three nothing. Oh, so, uh, three one, three, yeah, there we go, three nothing. They won, but uh, both Rogers and Mahomes birdie the whole. Rogers makes a nice putt, and Mahomes has to answer. But Mahomes usually, when he's putting for birdie, he's only about five feet away, so uh, he drains it. So right now, so they're only doing twelve holes. I'm sorry, I'm just watching this. And I'm into it, Chris. Uh, they're only doing twelve holes. They're through nine. After two holes, the old men, Brady and Rogers, won the first two holes to go two up. Since then, um, Holmes has led a, a charge on the comeback train, and now they're one up with three left to play. So let's go. There we go. Is so- there anything else going on in sports? Is there? There's a hockey hockey game. And Chris, I'm looking good in my prediction right now in the hockey. You are looking good. I mean, you. Mm-hmm. I mean, right now. I mean, we wanted the New York Rangers, right? We wanted to see if we could get in and and, and maybe play the Rangers. I mean, here's the thing: the Rangers aren't exactly, you know, they're they're not a pushover team by any means. So no, well, no, they're in the Eastern Conference Finals for a reason. Yeah. So yeah, it it I I, I do think it'll be fun to uh, match up with them again. There's a lot of ways we can like approach the the. Hey, we're going to be playing a good team regardless, uh, and I'm assuming that the Avalanche are going to be in there. I was like, I don't know that <laughs> you just jumped to that conclusion after last night. The only thing I know after last night as an Avs fan is I will be comfortable at no point of the series with a lead. I don't care if we're up eight to two. Last night was seven to three, and all of a sudden it was seven six, and we were on the edge of our seats. So that's right. Man, what is what a crazy game last night, but uh, I take Scotty A. Smith absolutely loves the Josh Patrick debates. Oh, there will be an eventually, and I wanted to get a little closer to the season, a little closer to the football season. But on my radar for a rant is for sure a QB debate, and specifically, it mostly revolves around Allen and, and Mahomes. Yes, so eventually that's going to happen here, McDougats. Don't you worry. Uh, so here we go. Uh, what else do we get? Hey, Marie, great to see you. Welcome back, Marie. What's up? Red rubber. Is that a monkey or a duck? I think it's a, uh, it says red, duck. red rubber monkey. <laughs> How long? But it's until like they a call duck me monkey. Queen. I give it six nanoseconds. I didn't even read his comment in the artist. <laughs> <laughs> so there's that. Uh, there we go. Welcome in. Gotcha. Red rubber. Welcome. Welcome. Dr. J, what's going on? I wouldn't be surprised if Scotty picks the Celtics to win the championship. We'll, we'll get we'll get into that. Ooh. We'll get into that. Maybe I'm picking the Celtics. Maybe I'm not. <laughs> uh, McDuggets, is it consensus? Please not Tampa. I think overall, I mean, I, I think it's fine. Um, thank you for the VIP status, guys. Very appreciative. Hey, you know what? We wanted to start getting some of you guys recognized. Then. You know, I know a lot of you guys, there are some of you that just are here every single stream that are gifting subs that are always involved, always throwing in your two cents, always whether we're talking about a sport you like or don't like, you're always just hanging around. So thank you. Thank you so much for all of the love. And uh, we still have plenty of VIPs to give out. So 
Um, guys, as long as you guys are staying active with our, within our community and you're always kind of hanging out with us, you're in our Discord server, you're all over the place. That's that's you know always always nice to have you guys in there. So um, yeah, D don't be surprised if if some of you guys start uh, seeing little uh, little diamonds next to your names because. Uh, I, I, I just did them real quick uh, over the course of the week, and there's still a lot more I have to get to. So if you don't have one, don't don't think that that's a bad, bad thing. I'm still I don't going even, through. I don't even think I'm a VIP, Chris. You're not a so VIP. I'm a, cause, I'm cause, a little upset. Because you're never in the stream. Upset. You're never in the stream. You're never chatting it up in the stream on, the, on in the actual chat chat. So Semantics. Semantics. I'd like, I like to be a <laughs> VIP. <laughs> Um, we are going to, yeah, dive into a lot here. So, but first we wanted to jump in. Do we want to, uh, where are we at in this hockey game right now? I think we are. It's about over. It, we got about 30 seconds to go here. So in a second, correct? Yeah. I, I don't know why I said it's about over. I mean, it's about over in the second, but got it. four, two, four, two. Yeah, so we're going to dive into a lot of these, uh, playoff matchups. It's going to be a lot of fun. Scotty is the co-CEO of Action Labs, says Dr. J. Yes, yes, he is. Um, uh, you know, that's a big title. I don't even know if I can live up to that. Co-CEO. Why am I so dark tonight, Chris? Can someone help me? Do I look like I'm in the dark? Like, and then it lights up, and I'm so confused. I'm like, what's happening? Is it your camera? Or is it the? Is it your lights? I don't know. I don't know. If I turn <laughs> off, I'm gonna just. I'm gonna mess around with this. Don't mind me, guys. Is that better or worse, Chris? Uh, it looks like it's you're in a dark room right now, Scotty. Well, the room is definitely dark, but all right. Then I have one <laughs> other option. Now I, I now I went real dark. Right there. Don't worry. Lighting is hard. I uh, mean, let's just. Chris always has it down, and I'm just a mess over here. I never adjust it. I never adjust well, it. I feel like every time I get on this thing, it's different. So, <laughs> how's that? Is that better? <laughs> Uh, you're, you're fine. You're good. I like that. Uh, uh, a Mandalorian's no. hyping over it, so that's good. Like, I, don't, I just don't understand, like, why it can't stay, like, consistent. And I'm not I'll using the camera that. I usually use, so maybe that's it. <laughs> train wreck, guys. I'm a train wreck. Chris looks so nice on screen, and I just look like a disaster. Maybe it's better if it's dark, though, for me. Maybe we just black you out, and then it, it's even better. I mean, I often black out chris so <laughs> i'm kidding, kidding. I, you know responsible drinker i'll drink to that um hashtag dork what's up guys so welcome in uh so now that we're on intermission we'll so we'll we'll take you through the course of the third period of this game right now rangers up four to two look at that cuban in the chat looks like a witness on 2020 with barbara walters who doesn't want to reveal their identity uh, that that's scotty that's scotty's right one now. of those we need to, to we need to get one of those voice changers, you know, like when they're trying to like hide identities and like you know, the when, when their people are in that secret, you know, what what do they call that uh, when when you're in um the the your they protection your something protection witness witness protection? witness witness protection yeah yeah and then the, and then they give you like the weird voice watch, and watch more crime shows yeah um, no I need to watch more crime shows by the way I witness. heard. Uh, I heard that new dinosaur show on Apple TV is pretty good. Speaking of shows, uh, speaking I'm... of crime shows, yeah, <laughs> speaking let's of jump into dinosaurs, Chris. <laughs> just you know, I, we're talking, just popping in. I don't think anybody knows what this what our stream's about at this point. They're just like, what is happening? No, no, it's it's just a, it's just a, a shit show from top to bottom. We just don't, we never know what we're talking about ever on this show. But that's what makes it fun and entertaining. Uh, the last. Put the light on the desk. Don't move. I, Don't move. I, I put the light on the desk. I have a light coming from one way. I got a light coming from behind me. And like sometimes it brightens and then sometimes it darkens. And I'm very confused. I don't, I didn't like science. So I don't understand light. Top Gun Maverick is amazing. Now we're getting into movies. Odia Cola saw that the other night. Uh, oh, also unrelated. How does it, how does it, how good does it seem to have John Madden back on the cover of Madden? I mean, feels good. I feel like that this was like gonna happen. It was it was yeah. meant to happen uh, for this next round. So 
Uh, yeah, it, he it, he gets honored by throwing getting thrown on the cover of his own video game, which rightfully so, he's earned that right, especially, you know, in, in the fact that he's no longer with us, so rip John Madden. So, yeah, no, that's pretty cool. Uh, that was one of the things that I wanted to touch on, so I'm glad you brought it up there, McDuggets. And, I mean, there, you, you couldn't put anybody else on there. No, it was going to be a for sure John Madden this year, which makes sense, and it, it's well-deserved. Um, I, I was going through the history of the Madden covers though. There is one player that is the most random. Like, I'm like, how did this dude get a cover? Peyton Hillis. And I, I, it is Peyton Hillis. I know he had like (laughs) one pretty decent season with Cleveland. Um, but man, he's the most random Madden cover of all time. Peyton Hillis. People are like, I don't even know who that is. I'm going to Google that. I mean, Uh, he yeah, was like he's... sort of a, he was like a running back, but in like a fullback's body. He was kind of like a Mike Allstop kind of. Then he played for the Chiefs, actually, um, following up on that and didn't quite replicate the one year he had. But uh, wow. Wow. But John Madden, absolutely. You love to see it. Um, hopefully the game's good. Hopefully, hopefully because Madden's on the cover, they put a lot into this. I know a lot of people complain a lot of times that Madden because they have all the naming rights for the NFL players, like they don't have to put a lot into the game every year. They just, they dominate the market because they're the only game out there. Um, but with this year being so important with Matt on the cover, I hope, I hope they put a lot into it, some new features, some better play, all of that type of uh, stuff, because there's some, there's some things they could do to make that, that game better. Don't not be- even, not, not only gameplay, but like side games or training or like, even like, you know, franchise mode, whatever. Yeah, uh, Doctor J King Raider Coach. Too bad the game is expensive. Yeah, I mean, yeah. what are what do games cost nowadays? Is it, are they like still sixty bucks? One million dollars. Might as well be. I mean, I can't even play. Uh, I haven't I haven't bought a Madden <laughs> since Mahomes was on the cover. So that wasn't that long ago. That was a few years ago. Um. So real quick, wanted to just throw out here that uh, I got I got some. 120. Mm. Is that? I think that's, that's not real. That's, nah. not, that's not real. I mean, there's now, of course, there's like eight tiers to Madden. You can buy like eight different tiers of the game. So there, there's probably a $120 version out there. But um, no, it's it's probably closer to, I, I imagine, right in like the 70 range, 65, 70. <laughs> I'm like, 120 games are expensive now. I'm glad I, I, I'm not playing as many video games anymore. So I want to dive into something real quick. First of all, I got a couple PSAs. One, we're at 470 followers, 470. We are 30 followers away from 500. So with that being said, we're going to celebrate 500 big time, but we got to get to 500, which means if you guys know anybody that you want to share the stream with, if you think there's somebody that might want to come in and start enjoying, you know, some, some fun sports talk in the lab share the stream let's get them in here let's have some fun because we're almost there guys 470 i may have to unfollow just to see 469 (laughs) you could you could uh all right fair enough would would my follow (laughs) counts i mean it'll yo-yo back and forth i think i think uh, we're not going to make progress by following and unfollowing but i like where you guys heads are at I, i like where your heads are at so with that being said, go out if you know anybody. Yeah, Dr. J. There we go. There we go. Was Dr. J not following before? I don't know if she followed or, or if she was already following, then unfollowed, then refollowed. I like the Shaq Jimmy, though. We need to get more of that. Yeah, but I have words if she wasn't following. Actually, before. no, she wasn't. I think it was 471. We just popped up to 471. So how are you? you weren't. I mean, now my feelings are a little hurt. <laughs> Quite honestly, <laughs> Dr. J, I could have sworn you were following. What? I mean, we'll take it. There we go. We're a little closer. 29 away. Let's go. Uh, so with that being said, let's get some more people in the lab. If you have anybody, by the way, and, and I was telling Scott about this. We've had some of our highest viewership in a long, long time, if not ever. And we're not even in the football season. 
that just shows how great of our uh, great of a community we have so thank you guys for all of your support thank you for all the subscriptions thank you for everything and you know it's it's really a testament to you guys and you know what you've been able to you know help build with us here because it's not just us we could be on here talking sports just randomly just to each other but you guys decide to hang out with us Dr. J, a protest against Scotty always talking about the trash about the Raiders. Dr. J, I have said for the longest time that Derek Carr is a top four quarterback in the AFC West. So I don't know how it gets better than that. I'm not talking trash. He's a top four QB in the AFC West. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Yes. And it's going to be a fun, fun AFC West. I'm telling you. Uh, 470. Ba -ba. Although, although between you and me, Doctor J, he's gonna outperform Russ. Ooh, hot takes. Red, red rubbers throwing out hot takes in the chat. As long as Herbert stays there, top three, I'll take that. Says Doctor J. Okay. Wait, Herbert's two. Herbert's two. Don't put. Why are you putting your boy at the bottom? Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> Stop it. You put your boy Where at the bottom. The five fingers. <laughs> Say it in the face. <laughs> what? Stop. Oh, sorry. I'm well, watching. Watching Josh Allen just come up short. So again on a putt like he does in the postseason. So real quick. All right. Do, you, do we want to start with that? Do we? Uh, so we're going to dive into three topics here right off the top. And... One, we're talking a little bit of golf because we have the the match going on as we speak. And I haven't watched any of it. So you're right. I've been Ooh. too busy watching the hockey game and then getting ready for the show. So I haven't had a great chance. And it's, it's such a weird time on a weird day, by the way. So I know they don't want to mix it up with PGA events. So it's just like hard to like keep it, keep track of everything. But what uh what we could do is let's dive into our top three stories. And we can work our way back into the NBA. We'll talk some NBA preview of the finals. And then we'll work our way back to the hockey game and talk a little bit of that as well. Guru, what's up? How are we doing, Guru? What's going on? Guru, uh, I, I I haven't been in the altitude chat in a while, but uh, it's good to have you in. I appreciate it. Thank you for coming by. Woo, let's go, Guru. Uh, we'll talk some avalanche too because that game was insane. But first off, let's dive in. And uh, you want to just talk about the, the match real quick first off? I know we have a lot of golf fans. Uh, I know one person in particular in our chat is really rare to talk some golf. So I can't let her hang anymore. Football wife, how you feeling about it? As we skip some of those other topics real quick. <laughs> Don't mind that. We'll get back to them. The match. Um, get us down to have speed. So, I mean, I've kind of talked about it. Now, I believe uh, Brady and Rogers just won the 10th hole. Hey, Marie, thank you for the Marie gifted sub gifted to Guru. To Guru. I've missed you, Guru. It's been a while, but uh, good to see you back in here. And thank you, Marie, for that gifted sub. Um, yeah, this match has been, uh, I think Brady just sunk a putt to, by the way, Brady might might have the worst drives I've ever seen in my life. The dude cannot drive to save his life. Really? Uh, oh, it's so bad off the tee. So bad off the tee. His iron game is like either it's really good or it's okay. But it, off the tee, he just pulls it left every time. Um, I think they just tied it up. So we they're only doing 12 holes on this one, Chris, not 18. But after 10, we're all square. So we could be looking at a playoff. In this match, but Mahomes has been dialed. Allen might as well not exist. Yeah, is he and, garbage? Is he just not good at golf? Uh, he's first of all, he can't. He can't. Has big. He's the biggest guy out there, right? Clearly the biggest guy. Not so long off the tee, um, which is kind of weird. He has a bad slice to his game, and he is four right a lot. And then also, just his personality is kind of boring um maybe he's just frustrated and he's trying to hide it because he's maybe he's playing worse than he's ever played i don't know but hasn't been great uh mahomie was drinking is he still driving in his car yeah mahomes <laughs> mahomes uh they got down 
two uh, uh Brady Rogers went birdie birdie on the first two holes. So Alan Mahomes were down two after the first two. Mahomes before hole three cracks open a Coors Light, sponsor of his. X Ray, what's yeah. up? X Ray Doc MD. We have another Doc MD. Let's I mean, a lot of MDs in the house. I'm assuming maybe Dr. Jake sent you our direction, maybe? Welcome. Oh, yeah, there we go. He's my friend. Uh, are you a Raiders fan as well, X-Ray? Are you uh, part of the Raiders, the Raiders family out there? If so, we would like to get to know you a little bit. Welcome. Welcome to the Action Lab Rat family. Let's go. Um, so we're... Uh, let's see. Brady. We're, where we're at? We're at commercial right now. Um, essentially, we're all square. All square through 10. Two holes left. We'll see what happens here. Um, Mahomes has carried the one team. Uh, Rodgers has certainly been the better player on the other side of things. But they use Rodgers' drive almost every time. And then Brady from there might might make a, pl a shot or two. So Allen's almost been... It's almost like he shouldn't even exist out there. <laughs> so I'm you're saying he needs to work on his golf game. His golf game is not great. He's trash. Not great. And I feel like Mahomes is directing him around and telling him what to do, which makes me feel so much better about the season. Mahomes is an alpha. I'm not sure Allen is. I don't think Allen's an alpha. And I want an alpha. Can we, uh, by the way, can we give X-Ray Doc uh, some big love and a welcome in the chat? Welcome, welcome uh, to the Action Lab. No Rams. Uh, he's in the he's for the Rams, the Dodgers, the Kings, all L A. By the way, Kings. Yeah, I mean they they have a nice little uh, number four pick going on out there. Uh, what what do you want with that? I I love of all the teams he just listed. You wanted to talk about the Kings. Kings. He's got the Rams and Dodgers, and you're like, oh, but the Kings have the number. Well, four we already pick. know the Rams and Dodgers are good, so it's like, all right, they're, 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 are, they're are fine. They good? Are they good? They're good. They're fine. They will. I mean, well, the Rams just won a Super Bowl. X-ray. What what is what's Aaron Donald? Is this just a leverage play that Aaron Donald's doing? Talking about like, oh, I always thought I'd play eight years and call it a career. It's a leverage play. Somehow he's only making fourteen million dollars this year. He should be making probably close to ten million more than that. Quite frankly, um, so I think it's a leverage deal to get a better deal. But you got it. You got to do what if you're a Rams, if you're the Rams GM, you got to do whatever Aaron Donald says. You, you're yeah. just like, OK, it's part of the deal, yeah. right? Yeah, uh, I will sign you. I will sign you right here, right now for whatever you want. You can't afford if you're the Rams to lose Aaron Donald. Guru says we need to get G Brew and 91 in here. Then he's also a doctor. Well, we just need to accumulate all the doctors in the chat. We'll be golden, right? I'm going to change my screen name to I'm going to add MD to it. <laughs> and then I'll be a doctor. Cuz cuz you've earned that doctor title. No, not even close, Chris, <laughs> but no one has to know. Brady's How chirp, are they going to know? Brady's chirp game was on early. He chunked one in the tee shot it says I call that chunky like Josh. <laughs> oh man. See, that's what I love I, about that. I, I did hear that one. But that that's was what funny. makes like, this ooh. match a lot more fun because like Traditional golf, you don't hear a. I mean, you can hear some of the go back and forth between like the caddies and the golfers once in a while. They'll have them mic'd up, whatever. That's cool. But like fun commentary, like you're out there with your friends and like you want to hear stuff like that. That's kind of fun. That's why this is one of my favorite events. I know it's not like a big time major event by any means, but it's still entertainment and it's still fun to watch. And no. especially when you got good, good shit talkers out on the course, like, like a Brady, I, I Manning was great out there. Manning's always, you know, saying, you know, little, little jabs and things that the different golfers that he's playing up against. So I like, it. I like, it. they put, uh, they put, uh, before it, they were in like a hot seat. So Mahomes and Allen were up on a hot seat and, uh, the interviewer asked Mahomes, what is Josh Allen's greatest fear? Mom was like, mm, and the guy was like, vegetables. And he's like, no, nah. coin toss, coin toss, <laughs> coin toss is his greatest fear. Yeah. Like, okay. Okay. It's let's go. Mickelson was a huge chirper. I'm a diehard Trojans fan. USC, by the way, we're getting closer and closer to college. Like college football is starting to pop up on some, some radars for some people. And I can't wait. We didn't do a lot of college football stuff last year. We're going to dive into a lot of college football this year. It's going to be, they've already released a couple of matchups too. 
well they've well a lot of matchups but more like time and what channel and things of that is what you're talking about but there's some big ones i think uh, um trojans listen i the trojans are a sexy pick new obviously the the coach from oklahoma comes over whoa moab moab's trying to get that vip status moab welcome welcome what's up and uh Moab, thank you so much for all of that love. I appreciate that. Five gifted subs. Let's go uh, to Matthew Case Case KLS uh, X Ray. You get a tier one sub as well. Congratulations, A Schultz and Prime Me Daddy. Let's go, mm. Moab. Uh, I like th- I like the name Prime Me Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let's go. Um, all right, perfect. Thank you, Moab. Moab just coming in coming strong. in hot. Um, Hope you're doing well, Moab, out there in uh, it, wherever you're at. Are you, you, are you just... Uh, I don't know where I was going with that. Sorry. I I was I was just here waiting, <laughs> just here waiting to see what you were gonna say. Um, um, thank you, thank you, Moab. Uh, Pierre, what's up, Pierre? Well, rolling on in. We have so just, much going on right starting now. Starting out by saying go Terrapins. No context. No, <laughs> we haven't discussed the Terrapins. We haven't even discussed that side of the country, I think. But I love Pierre coming in. Go Terrapins. I love you, Pierre. <laughs> I do. Uh, all right. So, by the way, um, hold on one second. I got to do one quick thing on the side here. Ba-ba-ba. Moab is not from Utah. Um, that would make a lot of sense. But Moab is not from Utah. Let's see. What else do we got here? Ba-ba-ba. And you're welcome, Chris Scotty. Oh, yeah. Again, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Portland. Uh, I take it Moab is from Utah. A Utes fan. Ready for you. Ready for your abs takes. Okay, there we go. Um, speaking of Utah, we have some things to go talk about with Utah. Potentially trades with Donovan Mitchell and the Lakers and Westbrook. A lot of things happening with that, too. Um, X-Ray. OJ Simpson is going to be honored by the Trojan alum on November 11th against the Colorado Buffaloes. See you buffs. That's a, that's an that's interesting, a super, super weird play. By, <laughs> by, uh, is juice by like US. back is like, we for, kind of forgot about juice for a lot, little bit. Didn't we? Uh, I mean, he I a, never thought I'd see the day where he's getting honored <laughs> by, by a college football team like that. Mahomes is just running around here on the match. He's he's doing all. He, Mahomes is so fun. What's up, Moon? How you doing? Hey, Moon. What's no, up, I said y'all? I picked Tampa, Colorado for a Stanley Cup, but I wouldn't hate it if the Rangers won this series. Oh, so you're coming coming on board with my pick, Moon? The uh, Rangers. I'm ads. hoping it's. I'm hoping that's the case. Let's let's actually dive back show. into that real quick because they have yep. started back up five to two now. Third period. The New York Rangers getting a quick goal right off the bat in the third period to go up by three. So this one, this is another high scoring game. We saw a big, big score yesterday in the Avalanche matchup with the Oilers. I mean, that was crazy. But we're seeing the sim- similar here with this this New York Rangers Tampa Bay. But Tampa Bay's goalie and uh, their defense isn't isn't really holding up as much as you would think against this New York Rangers team. So it's it's this is an interesting one to start out. Hey, what I told you is Shesterkin is going to be the reason the Rangers win this. Um, I mean, the shots are 26-23. You have the two best goaltenders left in the playoffs, both in this this side of the the bracket. However, the best uh, talent, I think, is on the west side when you remove the goaltenders. So um, this one, 5-2. Rangers coming out, continuing the momentum they had carried forward from that previous uh, series against Carolina. Um, you love to see it. Uh, Ooh, listen, big opportunity here for, by the way, Tampa Bay's on the power play with 110 left in that penalty kill uh, for yeah, the Rangers. I, I mean, you never know when a team has a long time off like Tampa did after a sweep. You never know if you're going to come out rested and firing. Ooh. You're going to come out a little rusty. And it feels like um, they've come out a, r- a little rusty. Uh, Tampa has in this one. Uh, Rangers are kind of taking it to them right now. 
Um, I actually didn't even realize. In my mind, I thought Tampa was going to have home ice in this one. Uh, clearly not the case, so I'm super educated, Chris. But uh, I'm here for for uh, <laughs> for all of this. Also, surprised I spelled his name from memory. Wondering if the nine games off made Vasilevsky a little rusty. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. I mean, the the big news is both goalies are still in net in this one. I thought you had to remove your goalie in like the second period. I thought that was a rule <laughs> after you, last night. Yeah, no, I think I thought that, and it's a minimum you have to score at least uh, at least six goals each uh, or something. X-ray doc, my wife is a Rangers fan. Oh, nice. Is she from New York? Uh, but yeah, so far right now the Rangers kind of surprising some people. Everyone kind of just had. Including myself, Tampa Bay just kind of shooed in to be in that Stanley Cup Finals, but right now it's looking like the uh, the first blood is is leaning towards going towards the uh, the New York Rangers here. But we'll keep you in tuned with this matchup. Uh, real quick, I want to talk about this. Uh, we, all right. This game last night was out of control. We'll keep the scoreboard up for the Tampa Bay game. 137 to 135, if I remember correctly. Chris. It, was that the final score? It was like a million to a million. Yes, yeah, she's from Syracuse. Oh, nice. Go Q's. Go Orange. There we go. Um, yeah, so with the last night's game, I mean, could did, I hope you guys watched last night's game. Because last night, if you like scoring, if you like crazy i mean and this isn't the game that the 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 avalanche wanted to play technically they won eight six guys eight six three to two after one four two in the second and then the oilers ended up putting two goals on the abs but the abs ended up pushing one empty netter at the very end but kale mccarr one goal two assists you had comfer two goals you had mcdavid had one goal two assists so he was playing you know pretty solid hockey himself but avalanche come out strong get the big big win now there was a, some issues with you know goal attenders uh, you had both goaltenders who started the game that didn't finish the game so that was kind of wild you uh, i mean smith got pulled after the first period right so avalanche put up three goals in the first in, they, uh, no middle of second or, or i'm sorry middle of second. second so so you had that and then you also had uh, a little injury on the Colorado Avalanche side that uh, Franco ended up having to come in and be the game finisher for the Colorado Avalanche. But overall, crazy game, and it, I don't expect this series to be reflective of this game. I think it's going to get tightened up quite a bit moving forward. So we're not going to have an eight-six game every single game by any means, but. That was a yeah, fun way to open 12, up. It might be 12 to 10. Might be. Is that what you mean? It's going to be higher scoring? <laughs> yep. Roger, Roger. Pretty uh, much. Yep. I mean, last night was was wild. And the NHL should welcome this. Yes. Um, quite frankly, there are a lot of traditionalists that are like, oh, this isn't like, there's not sound defense of hockey being played, this and that. But for a casual fan, if you want to increase viewership, you want this. You want to feel like, when you're down seven to three, the game's not over, which last night clearly it wasn't as, as the Az built a seven, three lead. And all of a sudden it was seven, six with a lot of time left, quite frankly, um, for, for Edmonton to attack on another. And they almost did before the abs added an empty netter. Um, man, if, if obviously Edmonton's lost game one of every one of their series. So this is an indicative and they lost nine to six, actually, I think in game one against Calgary. So this is kind of familiar to them, but that game was a ton of fun to watch. We saw a ton of talent on display. Listen, we have some of the best, obviously we, you know, everyone knows about McDavid and uh, you know, obviously McKinnon and McCarr and I will say his name wrong. So I'm not even going to say him, but the line made of, of mcdavid that you all know who i'm talking about that starts with the letter l i can't say it <laughs> i'll say it wrong i had it last night i was like chris let's work on this so we get the name right and now i don't remember no so that, that that flew out no no shot on that uh yeah, yeah no you know keep going 
Yeah, no, Guru's like when you have Wayne Gretzky say, I was probably the most offensive offensive guy of all time, but boy, you got to play some defense. That's saying something. But he was like, I wish it was like this in my day and age. And literally the the, yeah. the next highest scoring game was like in the playoffs in the Western Conference Finals, I believe was Edmonton with Gretzky. So I'm like, Gretzky, you lived through this in your Edmonton days. Don't tell me that you were like, oh, I wish no one played defense like this because you dominated a wide open ice game at times too. So um, pretty, pretty, I didn't love Gretzky's commentary there. Like, have like he should enjoy this offensive display that we have, and the speed and skill and passing that we got to witness last night was was absolutely awesome. And both both sides are in for it on the defensive end, and we need better goaltender play on both sides. Kemper, the rumor is Chris, and there's no nothing from the ABS, but the rumor I heard is it's it's blurred vision, like it's a vision thing with Kemper. And I don't know what that means or where that stands or what, where that goes. Obviously not ideal. If your goalie can't see, um, it's kind of an issue. Concern. Yeah. Kind, kind so, of an issue. Uh, but, uh, that was a lot of, that was fun. And at the same time, exhausting last night. Marie says he took himself out of the game. Uh, I, if that's the case, then I, first of all, I give him props for being open to throwing that out there and saying, hey, like I, I can't help the team in this state of what I got going on. So I, I, I definitely appreciate that. But that being said, I liked what Franco did in his relief. I thought he was okay. He didn't like... He made some big saves. He made some big uh, saves. I, I, I wouldn't say he gave up a soft goal. But here's the thing. I... I'm not a huge. I'm not. I don't feel super a hundred percent confident in either guy because they, they've both kind of given up. Well, Franco throughout the course of the season has been, you know, fairly good. But I mean, even I, I, I feel like they both kind of give me some pause on. They 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 can give up an easy goal here and there. So either way, I think our defense has to help them out. I think that 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 we need to tighten the screws when it comes to how we're defending. A lot of times there was a couple, even Bakar kind of left uh, uh, some some through passes that, you know, he doesn't typically do. So, you know, I think they'll tighten it up. I think it'll be fine. I think also the Oilers will tighten it up too. It's not going to be as easy. I, I, I wouldn't think, but we'll find out. So I, um, I weirdly feel like the Avs have to, not have to win, but I'd really like them to win tomorrow. Can they win tomorrow for us? I hope so. Dr. J in the chat. Brett Hull was the man. I like some Brett Hull. Brett Hull was Brett awesome. Hull was uh, a character in himself, but he was the man. I didn't even know hockey can get scores so high, says Moab. Mm-hmm. Um, it's possible. <laughs> Moon Princess and does not like Brett Hull. Not a Brett Hull fan. <laughs> See, he can suck he my played, big toe. He played for some of my... I respect his game, but he played for a lot of teams I don't like, so... In that regard, I can see it. I love the fact that we have Docs in the chat because De- X-Ray says definitely sounds spinal. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Okay. X-Ray, I mean, do you, do you want to be our Action Lab Doc that like you can help us with all these injuries, especially NFL season's coming up. We got all sorts of, you know, we, we could use your help, X-Ray and, I mean, and Dr. J and all of you guys, everyone who's in here. We need Docs to evaluate injuries for us. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, uh, because that, I, there was one goal specifically. I think it was their second goal, I believe, where he gave up a rebound where he had no idea where the puck was. And it was just yes. tapped in easily. And I was like, that's that's a really, really awful goal to give up. And it makes a little more sense now if he can't see, which is a concern. Uh, let's see. Oh, man, the Altitude Channel, if I talk about on how Kemper had a 796 save percentage and an 812 save by the time he left, I get ripped. It's like he is sucking, says Guru. Yeah, and and to be fair, like outside of that second goal, I don't know if he was awful on any of the other ones. Um, Our defense wasn't great. Obviously, the first one, Kane gets in on a breakaway right off the bat. Um, The defense was struggling. And, and not taking away passing lanes was the biggest biggest issue that I saw. You gotta you gotta take away and keep track of guys and take away those passing lanes. And they 
they let too many passing lanes through on the on the backside where the goalie had no chance whether it was didn't matter who was in goal for the app so um we need we need a little oh. better effort for the defense by the way we have another goal in this game six to two new york oh, yeah. rangers all of a sudden just just piling it on maybe we will have a high scoring game in this one i was joking around when i said it was going to be like six six i mean i at tampa needs to pulled up their end of the bargain in this game if they're going to start matching what's going on on the western conference side of things but Right now, 6-2, third period, 13-15 left in this one. So there's a shot on goal and covered up by New York. So we will have a little face-off here uh, to get things rolling up here in a second. But, man, uh, this is a statement game for New York, in my opinion. I mean, to Rangers go <laughs> keeping, keeping momentum against a team that just swept the number one seed in the playoffs on the East. Number one overall seed, quite frankly, best record and presence trophy to uh, the Florida Panthers who seemed here. Here's the thing. I thought Florida played tight. The Rangers, the Rangers have nothing like they can play loose. Like they weren't supposed to make it this far. No, they're not supposed to. Hear. All the pressure uh, I think is on the light. And again, pressure is a, is a thing, right? We, we talk about pressure when it comes to certain teams living up to expectations. When there's expectations of a three peat and expectations of you, beating the number one overall seed in the entire NHL, the expectation is you're going to win it all. And that's a lot to put on a Tampa Bay team that already needs to go for that three-peat in general. That's like weighing over them. I think this is going to be a tough series. And I think the New York Rangers, like you said, are playing with house money at this point. No expectations, really. They, outside of, you know, just being an underdog, making it here and, coming out, making a statement win uh, off this first game from what it looks like. Uh, a lot of pressure is going to be on Tampa Bay. Absolutely. Real quick, one of my favorite things in the chat. Guru, haha, this is funny that you read these. I'm so used to just talking to chat people on probably <laughs> altitude, I assume. Yeah. No, we're, we're here for you guys. We like to chat it up yes. with you guys. Otherwise, it's Guru. an old joke I've said for a long time, but I don't want to just talk to Chris. That's, that's not even a joke. That's real. No, so we, we make just, sure. He just said, fun times, got to run. But Guru, yeah, we're always here for you guys. We love to chat it up with you guys and hope you join us here every Wednesday and Sunday that you can. Guru, by the way, let's get, we, we send everybody away with the J.R. Smith wave. So guys, if we could spam J.R. Smith for Guru in the chat, that would be fantastic. Let's see how many J.R.s we can throw out there. Let's spam it. Let's get it out there. Uh, so thank you. Thank you for popping in again. Get some of the more get get more of the altitude folks in. We you know we, we like to get all those altitude folks into the, the by the way, that's another channel in the daytime. It's a radio station that here we have locally here that is uh they, they do a pretty good job. They don't acknowledge Twitch as much though. They don't. Uh but I love those guys. They're great. <laughs> Moab guru, don't let Scotty fool you. He is lying. LOL. What am I lying about? <laughs> Come on, Moab. I actually don't even know what he means there. I think I was being pretty serious there. What's up, Milwaukee's best? How you doing? Broncos, um, what's good, fellas? What's up? Welcome. Welcome. Hello, Hi, man. Man. Broncos, how you doing? Guys, we have a big, big... We have a lot of folks in the chat tonight. Guys, let's, let's keep it rolling. 472 followers, by the way. If you're not following, hit that follow button so that we can make sure that we get to 500 before you know it. Let's go. And uh, I haven't updated our subs. We are at 89. We're 11 away from 100. Are you kidding me? We, like, this is insane. Solid math right there. This is Solid insane. Solid math. Milwaukee's like Brewers, Cubs, tie going to the ninth. Ooh, the that's Rock like Rockies are playing a doubleheader. And the last I saw, they were tied in the second one. They lost the first one by a million. But it's 11-11. In the bottom of the eighth right now, uh, in the nightcap, and someone just hit it in the water. I don't know. I don't know who just hit it in the water. I, could, I, I think could, it was Brady. I was gonna say I could take Sorry. a guess, and I'd probably just guess Allen based off of what you were saying earlier. <laughs> I think Brady took his mulligan because they each get one mulligan over the twelve holes, and he put it in the drink. Uh, let's see. Check DMs. I'll check the DMs here in a oh. sec. Marie, oh, you, you, got, you got me the DMs? You slide into my DMs, Marie? What's going on? Uh, 
things but just got weird things so, just got weird let's go um the dodgers are down x-ray the good news is as a dodger fan you don't even have to you could bypass the whole regular season i mean you watch because you're a fan but they win they lose it doesn't matter they're gonna be they're gonna win the west even though they actually didn't last year um and they're gonna be in the playoffs <laughs> and they're gonna make a run it's the so article. That's a nice thing to have. It's the article, Smarty. But Marie, you can throw the articles. What uh, you can throw articles in the chat. That's fine. I don't mm -hmm. care. Uh, that way, that way, everyone else can check them out too, if you want. And as long as it's not like something crazy, explicit or something. Yeah, you you could just uh, throw it on in the chat. That way, we, if it's sports related, yeah. No worries. Uh, I feel the same way about Milwaukee. Get the regular season over. Pierre's all about the uh, the Cubbies. Ba, ba, ba. Dodgers, yeah, Dodgers. They're, they're in great shape. The dot, you don't have to worry about the Dodgers. I don't think they're no, they're 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 never. pretty they're pretty safe. Moon Princess, that's okay. I'd rather have my QB one bad at golf, good at football. He is good at football. Oof, he's not, he's not as good <laughs> as his playing partner, but he's good at football. Uh, so at, we can't say the same about Doctor J's A's. I'm. <laughs> Yeah, the, the A's need to move ownership. They need to move yeah, the to A's. somewhere else. Really, I don't even know if they have to move somewhere else. They really need a new owner. Doctor J, if the A's, let's just say the A's leave, would you follow them and to be a fan of wherever they go? Is that is that a thing, or or would you just not be a fan, or would you change to like another local team, or how how would you go about that? Just, just curious. I, 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 I don't know if I was in that situation how I would approach that. But uh, Bo Nix is good at football. Says Duran. Welcome in Duran. Right. How are we doing? Duranum loves his ducks. Look, loves his ducks. At least you can acknowledge. Uh, that I hope. He's good. I hope Bo Nix is really good. Yeah, <laughs> Moon Princess. Of course, I can acknowledge that he's good. Not a hater. Josh Allen's a very good quarterback. Very good quarterback. <laughs> Uh, no, have to change teams. The organization has no respect for its fans, says Dr. J. Okay. All right. That's fair. That's fair. It, I mean, I, I guess I'd be upset too. I would. I mean, I feel bad for Dr. J. You got you got the A's. The Kings. You got the Kings. You got the Raiders. Tough life. I Tough mean, life. Bleed. I think the key. Well, I think the Kings. No. What a... The Kings waste high draft picks like it's their job. And they traded Man, away one of don't. their best picks they've had in the last few years for, I know you're a Gonzaga boy, but that trade didn't make sense at all to me. It was an interesting trade for sure. And I mean, I love Sabonis. You got a great player with Sabonis, but yeah, it, it, it depends on how you build things around him. The Sharks stink. The A's stink. Oof, Dr. J. Yeah. It'll turn around. It's okay. It'll turn around for at some point at some point it absolutely does one of those teams is going to hit on something it's just a matter of time oh uh you know your team is the worst ever until they're not like the chiefs were the most underachieving team ever until they got Mahomes. anything's possible guys anything's possible i know i've talked about Mahomes a lot he's <laughs> The love of my life, beyond besides my wife and kids, of course. And it's it's questionable there too. Uh, and I don't know <laughs> if you heard the big announcement, but Mahomes is expecting numero dos. Ooh, They're shot. pregnant with number two. Shot on goal well, there, Tampa. Uh, shots on goal, by the way, thirty-two to thirty, very even. But New York has just been able to find the back of the net a little bit better. So, what what did I say, Shesterkin? Gonna gonna win this series for the Rangers, and he's proven me to be a genius. Which people already knew in the chat, but again, it's being proven. <laughs> uh, Rockies wants in, Doctor J. <laughs> Rockies wants in, want in. Yeah, uh, <laughs> second shot on goal for Mahomes. It sounds. It says What's Cuban. That? Second shot on goal for Mahomes. It sounds. Oh, oh, oh. What is a five? Yes, yes. Say to the face. Um, yeah, what? Mahomes is going to get 
get a second. By the way, his wife and kid are there. He he did get a hold his kid briefly and give him get the, get the kid a kiss, and then his wife took the kid back, and I assume passed it off to the nanny who m- couldn't have been that far away. Also cute, a fan little family family out there at the match in Vegas. Nanny, the nanny's probably watching the kid mostly. But <laughs> um, where's Jackson? Yeah. Where's Jackson Mahomes? Is he dancing somewhere on this in the in the he gallery? Is, he's probably doing some cocaine somewhere, Chris. I know. Um, I know. Cuban was wondering about where Jackson yeah, was. Yeah, he was talking about the. Oh my goodness! Oh, what? Josh Allen almost sunk one from like sixty feet on a putt. Um, that's would have been Josh Allen's one shining moment in this, but he left it this far right of the hole. Um. Great putt, great putt, uh, but otherwise irrelevant. So congratulations, Josh Allen. So in case you're just joining us here, we are going to be covering a, l- a little bit more of this hockey game. It's pretty much over at this point, so we're not going to spend a lot of time. We already kind of talked about the Colorado Avalanche game. If we could always answer your questions. By the way, if you guys have stories you guys want to talk about, throw them in the chat. We also have a couple other stories that we want to jump on here that kind of caught our attention that we want to dive into so we'll go ahead and do that here in a little bit and then we're going to get into some potal and some weddle we'll have some fun there try to guess some nfl and and nba players little game interactive right you know we don't have bingo tonight so we're going to be doing a little bit of that and then we don't uh bad news we didn't get uh, there wasn't really anything on the radar for scotty's coming in hot so we will not have coming in hot tonight. I'm sorry, guys. I just, I want to make sure when I'm coming in hot, I have a legit topic that I can speak soundly on. And this past week, nothing, nothing hit. Nothing, nothing, nothing came played. across your radar. Uh, but we could always talk about some other, other topics and other things that you guys want to discuss. So no worries there. The cool thing about this stream, you stop streaming after football. Uh, the cool thing about this stream, you stop streaming after football season ended. Oh, we, you mean we kept streaming? You, you mean? mean we kept streaming? Like yeah. we didn't? You didn't stop. You meant to You meant to say we didn't stop, right? I think that's what she meant. Yes. Uh, and, you know, again, like we, we like to we got to figure out other ways. Yeah, you kept streaming. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, it's it, <sighs> We would be doing you guys a disservice if we didn't keep popping on our normal schedule and talking some sports. Like, there, even if you guys are big sports fan, like NFL fans, you know, you still have other things that you guys want to talk about, whether it's like news related, trades, off season moves, NHL, NBA, different things. There's a lot of things you guys want to talk about that we want to give you an outlet for. So, it would be doing a disservice if we just like stopped talking and just didn't stream at all. And, you know, we, again, you guys, we want to come talk to you guys just as much as you want to come into our channel. And my, it's actually more, we want to talk to you guys because you guys are absolutely incredible. So appreciate that. Dr. J for all the love there. Quick question. Do y'all plan on covering any Thursday night football games this season? We actually are, we've, we've talked about doing a few, especially that first one right off the gates, the season opener. We are yeah. most likely going to be doing Thursday night football, but we are, I'm trying to work my way into the, the Twitch upper, upper management to get us so we can stream the actual game. How cool would that be? So the, the bigger, the, the, all be on time together. The issue with that is we need to have like, we're not as big of a stream. We don't have a high enough viewership for us. So again, we need more people to come in our stream regularly and be, you know, part of what we got going on, which helps our cause when it comes to making our case to Twitch to get on Thursday night footballs and being able to, uh, to stream the actual game. So I think that'll be a lot of fun. Let's see. The other sports streams today was all wrestling. There's a lot of wrestling out there. I'm not gonna lie. There's a lot of wrestling streams. A lot of, a lot of like pack opening, break card, card openings. I'm, I'm into. Ooh, shot on gold. New York stopped. I'll, I'll be frank here, Chris. Uh, we have a, we love sports, and we have a general knowledge of across a lot of sports. Maybe not as in depth as some, more than others or whatever. And uh, some of these 
people are one or two trick ponies and we want to cover the gamut we want to be involved year round we want to do this year round and we want to be relevant i don't want to change from a sports stream to a painting our our i don't know the wall behind me chris stream i'm not, I'm not <laughs> yeah. calling anyone there but um yeah i i just like it's important to me that the stream is good year round and that we keep involved with the sports and and do our best to to cater to every sport because yes i my love is the nfl i'm not gonna lie i i but i love all sports and i'm very involved with a lot of sports so i just i just enjoy year round and there's that's what makes sports great is there's something year round that you can cater to and you can enjoy and keeps you going. So uh, appreciate you guys hanging with us. We're going to dive in, of course, once football season starts. But in the meantime, we got playoffs in NHL and NBA right now. And we got baseball going on and golf, of course, and, and a lot of other things that, you know, UFC, boxing, things like that. We'll cover it all. That's what we want to do here. Let's see. MVPs, football, A-Rod, B-Ball, Giannis. Boom. Says Milwaukee's. <laughs> all about those Milwaukee's. All, all, all those sports up there in the Midwest. You got them covered up there. Why did ESPN give the headline that number 23 came after an HBO thing? Uh, it says McDuggets. Not sure. Not sure. I'm not. Wait, what do you mean by that? I'm not sure what you mean by yeah, that. Yeah, I'm not sure either. B-Rock. What's up? How are we What's doing, B-Rock? Do you think Lincoln Riley is going to revamp USC football, says X-Ray? I mean, yeah. I mean, USC is going to turn back into who they were early 2000s um, under Lincoln Riley. Saying that, I love the under on win total on USC this year. <laughs> I think the hype is overbuilt. I think there's so many transfers Bruh. and so many pieces and new coaching staff. I don't love USC this year, but moving forward, I think Lincoln Riley is going to be a great hire. And UFC, USC is going to be phenomenal moving forward in football and back to a powerhouse. I was wondering where you should, <laughs> They should be. Uh, but under under this year, I love it. Take it. Bet it. Again. On their on their win total. Because who's Brent. betting who's betting the under on their win total? No one. No one. I their, bet their 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 NIL deals with like the wide receiver they just picked up. Like they're getting everybody. But this year I don't love them. Moving forward, like them a lot. Ready for the question of the day, B-Rock? Hit us with it. Hit us with it, B-Rock. I can't wait to hear it. What My man. is the question of the day? Hey, what's up, APC? APC. What's up, mate? Hey, we're uh, we're we're sinking some tins up here, uh, out here. And uh, by the way, we, we haven't seen our boy Steelers Nation in a while. Yeah, I hope hope he's doing well. All of our Aussies down there, you know, yeah, you know, appreciate all of you guys. But yeah, uh, sinking some tins, having a good time, watching some hockey. It's a good time. It's a good night. Works for he, me, says he, X-Ray. He wants uh, he wants Boston. Uh, talking about NBA, he, he, he likes Boston there. You can give me your answers on Sunday. What's yeah. your starting five NBA considering uh, consisting of players not to make a finals appearance? Interesting. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, we'll definitely get that get that on Sunday to bring some viewers back because I gotta look, I gotta look it up and make sure like I'm not missing anybody. Is this active B Rock? Are you talking active players or all time players? Please do active because all time would be ridiculously difficult. I'm gonna take your your comment and throw just put it as a note here so that we can get that ready for you guys in our Sunday show and make sure that we have that set up. So. Uh, ba, ba, ba. you can use all the time. You can use all times and active. Okay, I like that. Split it up. I'm more intrigued by active because that. Yeah, but all time, all time just opens up. That's like a lot of, a lot of players. Okay, maybe we focus on active. I sent that in a Slack channel for you, Scotty, so that we have that we can remember that. Uh, what the I question usually is. ignore. I ignore the Slack. <laughs> I, I know you do. <laughs> I don't ignore it, Chris. I respond eventually. <laughs> I was uh, very busy. Double header today at work. Three twenty four left in this game. New York Rangers up six two over 
The, oh, and almost the goal there by Tampa Bay. They are knocking on the door here and looks like New York will clear the zone. So yeah, uh, it, it, this game is pretty much over. It's been over for a little bit, but it looks like, I mean, what do you guys think? Do you guys think the New York Rangers can really take down the Tampa Bay Lightning here and prevent the three-peat? I, I mean... The way they're playing in this first game, I, I know it's a long series. I think this is going to be a long series. I think that that uh, Tampa Bay will end up going back and and doing some good things at uh, oh and another opportunity there. The opportunities keep coming for New York, regardless of what you know. Tampa Bay keeps trying to push forward, but yeah, you're right, Marie. It's too soon to tell. B -b -b I hope. I hope he could get more rings. Says APC. Uh, uh, this saying Tom Brady. Tom Brady. I mean, he's he's on the golf course right now. Scotty, how's Tom Brady doing around the golf course right now? Uh, I'm I'm trying. It's way harder to follow this when I'm streaming and I don't have volume. But I think Rogers just hit a big putt on the last hole to put Rogers Brady one up with one to go, or it's done. It looks like it's done. I don't know what happened. I am lost right now. So was there like any interesting bets or anything that I missed along the way? Was there anything crazy that I, I should know about that will make headlines no. the next day? No, I don't think they made. Oh, oh, Mahomes' daughter has a pretty decent arm for her age. Um, I guess it's over. I think Rodgers and Brady won. Um, but the, Rodgers and Brady beat Mahomes. Um, there, there literally was not four players playing today. Just three. <laughs> Just three. Because uh, Josh Allen didn't show up. To do Allen was not there. Not there at all. I have to look it up now. I'm very confused on what I missed there, though. Ooh, getting chippy I here at the end of this game, by the way. There's a lot of trash talking. It's getting chippy. It's going to be a fun series moving forward between these two teams. Uh, you got everybody fired up by the way we uh i want to check out that avalanche red wings documentary that's coming up i know a couple of you guys mentioned it in the chat last time uh it, it's starting to pick up more steam when it comes to like hearing about it in all sorts of different areas but super excited for that we might do a throwback and watch maybe some old school avalanche red wings one of the best rivalries by the way guys uh when we talk about best rivalries in sports, obviously, you know, there's certain teams that come to mind. What is your favorite rivalry? I mean, obviously, I think one of my favorites has got to be the Red Wings Avalanche because those things were absolute bloodbaths, literally. And it was so much fun. Packers Bears, says Milwaukee. Boston Montreal, says Moan Princess. You, what? Yeah, what are your favorite favorite rivalries that are just never die? I mean, Ohio State um, obviously has their rivalries. Uh, you know, I, I don't know. I want to say active in the NFL, like KC, my Chiefs first Bills, but is it a rivalry? It's not, I don't think that, that needs every time? time. That needs time to marinate. It's not, it hasn't been like. But like one team wins all the time when it's important. So it can't be a rival. <laughs> but you're going off of like. I mean, because the Bills, the, here's the thing. The Bills have, you know, had to work their way up to this point. So they haven't really been, like, teams that haven't been as relevant. Well, I can't say there's a rivalry for what the Chiefs What are the five fingers? Right say it in the face! <laughs> <laughs> Moon Princess, what? I'm Scotty Dean. Stop. I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm terrified <laughs> of the Bills this year. I'll be honest. That's why I'm giving so much crap. Um... <laughs> Uh, there's no rivalry for the Chiefs in the AFC West right now, Chris. Not currently. If you I, go all time, still no, not really. Uh, I mean, there's just there's not division rivalries are interesting in the NFL, but there's not like Raven Steelers was a thing for a little bit. It still is. No, Raven Steelers is up. Like there. they're they're Raven Steelers, uh, but it, it, both teams have kind of. It, no, the Ravens, Ravens were beat up, and the Steelers somehow made the playoffs last year, but don't have a quarterback, so that's a problem. Cuban uh, Benny loves the Jags and Texans rivalry. Ah, uh, that's epic, Cuban. <laughs> yeah, the epic rivalry. 
APC has uh, Red Sox Yankees. That's that's iconic. A Red Sox Yankees is iconic. You can't get more hatred than those two historic teams because that goes way way back. Obviously, that's a fun fun one. Raiders Broncos says Doctor. I say I would say if, as a Raider as a Broncos fan, I would say the Raiders have typically been historic. Uh, historically, the bigger rival of any team in that division for the Broncos. It's always been Raiders. I mean, because you had that history going back with Mike Shanahan and like the, you know, Al Davis kind of, you know, there was some of that blood that was going back and forth. I feel like the Raiders were more of a more of a rivalry for Denver. I I actually think what's weird about the AFC West is I think the Raiders, Broncos and Chiefs would all consider themselves bigger rivals than involving the Chargers at all. Chargers. Like, that's, not a, that's not a shot at the Chargers. It's just like, honestly, if I'm a Chiefs fan, I'm ranking... Chiefs fans would rank Raiders and Broncos 1-2, whether it's... What, what order you could debate, whether it's Broncos 1, Raiders 2, or vice versa. And I think it's the same for the Broncos, and I think it's the same for the Raiders. And it's just like, everyone else with the Chargers is like, oh yeah, they're in our division too. Um... But there's there's a ton of good rivalries out there. Dodgers Giants, as X Ray points out, is a huge one in baseball. Uh, I think that's you put that I, that might be number two in the MLB behind obviously Yankees Red Sox. You have like Cardinals Brewers is a pretty big one. Uh, Cardinals Cardinals back. Cubs, Cardinals Cubs, Brewer or you know any uh, that central division in general. Um, can get pretty, pretty. Uh, we got, we got some fun nasty. ones in the chat. Lions, if lions versus officiating, then versus now. We have. I saw, oh, I saw one that was Cowboys. I think Reckoning said Cowboys versus playoffs. <laughs> it's it's epic death. rivalry, but it's recently dominated by playoffs. It's a trap. It's a trap. Ohio State versus literally the rest of the Big Ten. Yeah, that could be one. I mean, Ohio State's Michigan, right? It's Michigan, but yes, I get what your point is. I love uh, Bay- Babe Ruth from Red Sox. When I was in the Marines, Giants Dodgers was huge out there. Pirates and competing, says Reckoning. Ba-ba-ba. Do like Tupac or Biggie? Sm- oh, we're getting So we're going pop culture now. Tupac and Biggie. There we go. Wasn't ready for that. Wasn't ready for that, but I like it. I like it. Might even throw some Seahawks from their AFC West before the Chargers, says Cuban. The Chargers are known as that other team in LA. I'm a Nittany Lion. We hate Ohio State, says Moon Princess. There's a lot of hatred for Ohio State, I think. Yeah, well, hence why someone said Ohio State versus the entire Big Ten. Yep. And Milwaukee's Packers versus Bears, hands down. The the problem is the Bears have been dominated by the Packers for so long now. Like the the Bears just don't hold up their end of the bargain. Rockies and Diamondbacks to see who would be at the bottom. Says Dia Cola. Dia Cola. A different take. McDougats, Bill, Bills versus Super Bowls. I like it. Can't be a rivalry if one if one side wins every time and Super Bowls wins every time against the Bills. Uh, Cuban Benny has the old school CU Nebraska. That was a good one. That was an underrated with CU Nebraska, and that's CU still Nebraska was it, epic. Still, still the greatest in person football game I've ever gone to was when CU beat the number one ranked Nebraska at the end of the year, sixty two to thirty six. I was there. I was in high school at the time. It was epic. It was crazy. It was wild. Best best in-person football game I've ever been to. I I never had the pleasure of going to a, uh, one of those. Oh, oh, Duke UNC. Of course. North Carolina, Duke and UNC. That's we see, that's a really good one. Uh that one there's there's I Iron Bull Milwaukee points out, Auburn, Alabama. I mean, there's a there's a ton out there. There's a ton out there. A lot of sure. fun. So now, now we might have Alabama, Texas A and M, based off the coaching situations there, and the oh, can you can you wait? They may have. I a can't bit. wait for that matchup, Alabama, Texas A and M, based off of all the craziness that went down this 
past. Ooh, and there we go. Final. New York Rangers end up winning this game one. Seventh straight home playoff win for the New York Rangers. Longest single playoff streak in franchise history. New York Rangers taking care of business against the hope to be three-peat Tampa Bay Lightning. But this one is all done. Madison Square Garden. It is in the book, Scotty. What do you what what does this mean for Tampa Bay? I mean, do, do you think I, they I already do, said lightning does not strike three times? Do you think not. Tampa splits in New York? Uh, do you think they take game two? No. No. Ooh, okay. No, I, I like think it. York, I think New York takes game two. I think they go up too well. Probably at that point, give the nod to the lightning in game three, but we'll see. A lot to figure out between then, but no, I think the Rangers should be favored in game two, and I think they win game two. Okay, all right, I like it. I like it. I, I, I'm, I'm going Rangers too. They're just hot at the right time. That that's a thing in hockey, right? Hot, hot I mean, goalie play, hot teams. Like yesterday, you picked the picked I did. the Lightning. I did. This I did. And um, after one game, you're I'm just. Prob I'm, I I think I might be wrong on that. Flipping flipping <laughs> what else do we got here before we're, we're so we're gonna dive in there's shown some replays here of some of the goals by new york because i didn't see some of these but man there are some there's some nice ones here by by new york Oof, nice puck movement there um what else do we got in the chat shack versus the free throw line is another one i like that one not again, not really a rivalry when one one side dominates the free throw line. Cuban Benny, Q, uh, Joe versus the volcano. Okay, I like it. Man, you versus Liverpool and uh, Barca yeah, versus Real. Real Madrid. There we go. Uh, absolutely. For those of you that don't know, that's soccer or <laughs> football. Um, yeah, those are huge and ones we don't think about here, but. Across the pond, those are uh, epic rivalries. Any Major League Baseball versus the Cardinals in September, says Reckoning. And Tom Brady versus the NFL. We have some fun ones going in the chat, by the way. A lot of fun rivalries. A lot of fun rivalries. So keep them coming. I can't wait to keep seeing more and more going there in the chat. So, by the way, if you're here, hit that follow button. Again, my name is Chris. This is Scott down below here. We are your host for the Action Lab, so make sure you guys are just hitting that. We are, what, what are we at now? Uh, we're all 28 away, 28 followers away, it looks like, from 500. So hit that follow button if you have not already, so we can get that much closer to 500 followers. That is a big milestone for us on this, big sh on this, this show. Huge, huge milestone. So thank you so much. By the way, also, if you would like to send some bits and have your message read, and we can all hear it on stream. You can do that. Just put in some bits and just type in whatever message you want. Also, if you want to just link your Twitch and Amazon Prime, all of it, you can subscribe to any channel on Twitch for free. So make sure if you haven't done that already, exclamation point Prime in the chat will get you the link on how to do that. So you can subscribe to us if you would like, and you can get access to all of our favorite emotes, all of the cool things that we have going on. Uh, when it comes to our chat. And also, it takes away the ads. Uh, so you could go ahead and do that as well. And last but not least, the only way that we love, or one of the ways we love you guys to support the channel, is to just be active in the chat and have a good time talking sports with us. That's what means the most to us. So we hope you're having a great time tonight. We hope you guys are continuing to be with us throughout the course of the night. We have a lot to get to. We have a lot of stories. So let's make sure that uh we're having a good time together here uh b-dub welcome man we haven't seen you in a while b-dub how are we doing the uh marlin scored 25 runs today in colorado well and it's not over but they <laughs> might lose they might lose one of those we'll see they're in extra innings right now in the second tied 11 11 against the rockies you know what um, you know what i love in the chat right here x-ray very interesting concept a rat in a lab coat holding a beer and coming from a doctor, it is very interesting. We we thought about this a lot before we put it in here. Um, 
you guys are lab rats and we like to cheers with drinks. So I think that was the thought process there, but X-Ray takes it to the next level and now he, I feel like it's a stupid emo, Chris. Sometimes I I'll feel like to that. I'll drink to that. Sometimes I feel like we get complacent and like all of our lab rats just like are, are oblivious to some of like the aesthetics of certain things, which you know, like our emotes, we love our emotes. But then someone new comes in and we're just like, oh yeah, it's a lab rat in a lab coat drinking a beer and shearsing a beer. Yeah, it, it makes sense. It makes perfect sense. Police versus people, says APC. All right, getting getting get yeah. a little serious Taking on that out. one. Sports, sports spectrum. <laughs> Need an open panel on Discord once in a while. Yeah, like we should do that. Even, I don't even know how that works. What's an open panel on Discord? We'll course? have uh, Reckoning school us on that. But we can op have like, you know, Discord calls where people can just join in. And actually, we could just talk sports, just uh, like a, like a phone call almost, and and have Kinda, a good time with it. So, oh, but their real voices are on it. Like we can hear, like them? like we are all talking in a big group kind of oh. thing. And we could do that on Twitter. Uh, Twitter has that feature as well, by the way. Sure, sure. That's the uh, what is that called? The uh, what's that called on Twitter? Chris, it's, I don't, I can't remember what it's. It's like spaces, 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 spaces. spaces, spaces, spaces yep. Yeah, uh, yep, yep. Got it. Could sure. do a Twitter. What about a Twitter Spaces or a, you know, Discord? I'm not <laughs> as familiar with that one. Joker versus Tony Brothers. That's a nice rivalry. Joker versus any referee is a good rivalry. Yeah. Just, just putting that out there. And um, he's lost every time. Okay, so I want to go back to the water cooler. We have a couple of thought provoking stories that are happening in the media. And Scotty, it looks like you're gonna take a code yellow. Code yellow for me, real quick. Boom, let's go. Let's spam code yellow in the chat. If you're new, uh, whenever one of us has to take a code yellow or use a bathroom break, we spam those yellow code yellow sirens. So go ahead, hit those code yellows. Let's spam it. Let's have some fun with it. Um, have you had Australians talk? Yeah, APC, we've had a few people from Australia put, roll in. By the way, there was a... a Splucy is a is a Australian fisher... She was in the, the sports accelerator program that we were in. Look at all those yellows. I love it. Uh, she so you know, she brought some of hers. We had Thunder Spanner and we had Steelers Nation and a few other people from, from down under come in. We have we have people all over the place catching our show. So it's it's really humbling to have everybody from across across the pond, wherever you might be, to uh, join the stream. So thank you for all the support. And we sink a couple tins while we're at it. I think that's the, that's what we learned is, uh, you know, drink a couple beers, have a good time, talk some sports, right? So, yeah, absolutely. I'm a huge on Twitch politics. I can help, says Milwaukee's. Interesting. Okay, we don't typically get super political on this show, but you know, maybe maybe we open up the environment for you know, we we as we get further along, as we get bigger, we can start maybe having deeper conversations with you guys because that, that's kind of fun once in a while too. So, but. We keep it lighthearted here. We're like, you know, we're just trying to have fun and talk some sports and, and enjoy uh, enjoy a lot of what we have going on in, you know, trying to take your mind off of the day to day, right? That's what our job is, you know, and it's a fun job to have. I, I wouldn't even consider this a job, but let's dive back in. Um, and we want to talk a little bit of NBA. We have a couple topics here uh, that we want to touch on. So we're going to dive into a couple of them. One of which has to do with some rumors and some different sources. Again, I don't, you know, it's fun to talk about rumors at this point. And honestly, I've heard a ton, a ton of rumors surrounding around uh, the, the whole Russell Westbrook and Donovan Mitchell. Both people, both players are really trying to get like it's kind of kind of shifted out of their positions right that obviously you have donovan mitchell who's not super excited to be in utah with his boy rudy gobert and by boy i mean they absolutely hate each other and you have westbrook who is in la who is just not a great fit in la and he seems to want new pastures to go to but this past week we saw a couple people and 
or a couple people in the media and a couple rumors and a couple sources who knows how legit they are but they are out there floating around things don't float around like this for nothing when it comes to from some like bigger sources but who knows that donovan mitchell and russell westbrook could be on the move and they could be swapped for each other now i've seen rumors with you know donovan mitchell going to cleveland and to all, new york and to all these other teams there's a lot of rumors out there so i'm not like throwing a ton it, this is just more of a fun thing but the one that really caught my eye was it fits that these two players want out of their current situations most recently i saw that westbrook is most likely going to stay in la but scotty what would you make of a guy like Donovan Mitchell, who kind of wants out of Utah, doesn't want anything to do with Utah and Rudy Gobert, but also uh, Russell Westbrook trying to trying to move. Is it a good fit? Uh, first of all, football wife, thank you for the gift. Hey, thank you for the uh, gift. I don't Indians know what's up with our alerts tonight, by the way. No alert there, but I saw it. Thank I'll you, drink to that. Wife. Appreciate football you. Football wife, let's get some air horns at least. Gifting this, a sub this, at 90, by the way. 10 away from 100. Oh, my goodness. Let's go. I love it. Chris, this, this trade doesn't doesn't exist in real life. There's what, yeah. in, in what world In what world would Utah be like, yeah, let's take Westbrook back for Donovan Mitchell? Like, the Lakers would have to throw in every other player on their team minus LeBron and AD. To make this even make sense and i'm i'm not saying donovan mitchell's like the end all be all listen great offensive player not so great on the defensive end um but westbrook brook has no trade value this this concocted trade is literally media being influenced by la people to like try and affect the trade market westbrook will not be moved because no one wants that contract or that player and LA doesn't want to give up other assets in a deal to move on from Westbrook. So guess what? Westbrook's there next year. And the Lakers, guess what? Are going to be trash next year. Okay? Uh, I, I It's just going to happen again. Like, maybe they'll be healthier. Maybe AD will play more. Maybe LeBron will play more. But at the end of the, uh, end of the day, you just don't have... You're relying on these guys that are either really old... In LeBron, Westbrook getting up there in age, or AD, who's never proven to stay healthy and isn't elite enough. The Lakers are not going to be a different roster next year, and they're not going to be, they might make the, they'll probably make the playoffs next year, but they're not going to be a realistic option to win a title next year at all. And this trade will never happen. Well, Donovan Mitchell, I get it. The Lakers want to get, Russ wants to move on, Mitchell wants to move on. So they both could be traded, maybe, but not for each other. That's that's so heavy weighted. Mitchell's a way better asset than than Russ at this point in their career. Way better. No, a hundred percent. But you all, I mean, we mentioned a lot how the Lakers are going to kind of be a mess next year. You want to talk about another team that's going to be a mess? The Utah Jazz. Obviously, Rudy Gobert and Donovan Mitchell don't like each other. That's not a, a secret, right? They 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 don't get along. But then you got this news about Quinn Snyder, who I feel like has done a great job. I feel like he's done a pretty good job at getting... I mean, over the time that he's been there in Utah, maybe he needs a change of atmosphere at this point. But his future's in question. That came out this past week about how he might not be sticking around in Utah for too much longer. So let's say you lose either Rudy or Donovan Mitchell, and then you lose your coach, Snyder. You, I mean, you... you, you I mean, that team's going to look a lot different next year. Maybe. Maybe. Maybe not. I mean, I think they want to make a move, but you got to have something that makes sense in the meantime to make that happen, and we'll see. I don't know if you're Utah why you would trade. If I'm Utah, I'm, I'm trading Gobert. I'm not trading Russ. Oh, yeah. Or not oh, Russ, yeah. Mitchell, sorry. I'm not trading Donovan. I'd rather keep Donovan than, than Gobert. And it's a no-brainer for me if I'm Utah. So it could look different. We'll see what happens. I think they move Gobert. Yeah, I think they hold on to 
to Donovan because Donovan, I mean, we saw it firsthand as a Nuggets fan in the playoffs where he went off. They ended up losing in seven to us, but they were up 3-1. Donovan Mitchell was going for 50 a couple times. Like, dude could not miss. I don't care if he sucks on defense, if he's going for 50 and can't miss on the other end. And he's one of the few guys, I mean, I've never seen anything like it. Him and Jamal Murray in that series going back and forth was the most wild thing I've ever seen in a series. I've never seen anything like that. In I, I, I've seen a lot of playoff basketball. That was the most incredible thing. You just, it was just, it was like they were playing one on one and you didn't have anybody else in the court. And it was just like bucket for bucket over and over. It was so good. Scotty, you say that like LeBron hasn't thrown his entire team for a player before. <laughs> so yeah, no, he's a terrible GM, but can you literally sell your whole team and have three players on your roster and then just everyone else is like, yeah, a guy you pick off the street? I don't know. Uh, and yeah, uh, Russ's reckoning is like, uh, or not reckoning, uh, Milwaukee's Westbrook's contract is too much to trade. Yeah, he's making like, I believe, $47 million next year. So Westbrook's not going anywhere in my in my mind. Cavs need Westbrook players. Going to be on the Lakers. Cavs need players. Anybody they can pick up, please, says the Indians fan. Obviously, he's looking for some some moves to come uh bring some guys into Cleveland. I can see uh, I mean they I feel like they're going to be fairly active. They're getting they're starting to taste a little bit of success out there in Cleveland. Post. X-Ray made a great point. You are right. The LA media proposed a trade for Zach Levine for Westbrook. Like, yeah, like they make up fake shit in the media just to hope that like, oh, then that'll affect the GM. There's no way. Like, I've heard Zach Levine would like to be a Laker, but there's no way to make that happen. There- you can't sign him. He's going to be like you. Zach Levine will not be a Laker. Let's get out of here. X-Ray, good point. Really good point. The, the everything in the LA media is made up. They just make it up to try and help their. The problem is, is like LA needs to stay relevant, right? They, they like you're this mythic franchise. This this you know you have to be Showtime. You're the Los Angeles Lakers, and the minute like when's the last time you heard LA Lakers rebuilding? Like that doesn't happen in LA. You don't rebuild the Lakers. But that's what they're headed towards. Like that's 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 where they're headed. And I mean, what they've put together, what LeBron has put together, it's 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 a rough navigating that landscape of what he's built, right? Contract wise, everything. It's it's not easy. Uh the debate around here is would you trade Middleton or Holiday in a first rounder for Lillard? Everyone is saying hell no, says Milwaukee's. Uh I'm mm. still mad. I'm still mad that the Nuggets didn't make a move for Holiday when he was available, when the Bucks picked him up. He I would on- not I wouldn't make that move in Milwaukee. You won a title, then Middleton gets hurt this year and you 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 know don't make it as far as you would. But don't if Middleton's healthy, who knows how far you go? Don't don't mix it up and bring in a guy like Lillard who's coming off a big injury and quite frankly isn't I don't know how like he doesn't have the defensive mentality Lillard's not a great defender at all he's a great offensive player better than either of those two but on the defensive end he doesn't really fit the the mold of Milwaukee I I wouldn't do it I wouldn't I wouldn't trade that yeah it's what's weird is like I feel like Lillard is one of those guys that that's a weird one. Like it's going to take a lot to get him. I just, I I don't know. I, I think that one's going to shock people where if, if he ends up getting moved or if he ends up, you know, wearing a different uniform next season, I think it's going to be a weird team that no one's expecting. That just seems like a weird, I don't know. I don't know all this. There's too many scenarios out there. Anyway, so we're going to keep an eye on all of the rumors. Obviously, all the rumors are coming out of L.A. because L.A. just loves to spin out all sorts of different different trades and options. Real real quick for B-Dub because he's been commenting on Marlins got 26 runs in two games today and went one and one. 
because they just lost to the Rockies 13-12 in extras with a two-run shot from Brandon Rogers to close it out for the Rock Show. Let's go. Um, 26 runs in two games, and you go one and one. I'll take it if you're the Rockies. The Rockies, at one point in this first game today, Chris, the Rockies were trailing 14 to nothing, and the hits were 21 to one in the game. I think that was after seven innings. 21 to one in hits in the game. Jeez. Rockies ended up losing that one 14 to one, but it doesn't matter because they won the nightcap 13 to 12. So all all said, one and one today. Even playing field. That's crazy. Uh that's, that's crazy. <laughs> Lillard vets uh mid him for LA. Another Lillard's LA writer said Ky- Kyle Lowry for Westbrook. By the way, Kyle Lowry has didn't have a great series uh for the Heat. We were talking about that the other night. But yeah, he I think uh, he needs to be better. I don't know. Injuries have really caught up with him. So I think that is part of it as well. But no one no one's trading for Westbrook unless they get a lot more in return besides Westbrook. And you don't have to give anything up either. There's no reason. Milwaukee's best doesn't have to give up Lowry for Westbrook. They could give up like their 12th man. And if they could take on the contract, the Lakers would do it. The Lakers are screwed. They're screwed. And they're looking for someone to bail them out. They're looking for a team to bail them out and take on Westbrook's contract. Don't help them out, NBA. Screw over the Lakers. Leave them be. Another, by the way, can I can I sh- share one weird fact that I found the other day that kind of blew my mind? We, we're all set for the NBA Finals here. I'm going to talk a little bit about Steph Curry here in a second. Or we are going to talk a little bit about Steph Curry in a second. But did you see the whole thing with the New York Knicks that they've had a, some sort of connection to the NBA Finals? Ex-players, ex-New York Knicks making it to the NBA Finals. Have you heard? Have you seen? Have you heard this? Is this like seven degrees of Kevin Bacon? What do you mean? So no, I haven't seen it. Okay, so <laughs> this is a weird thing. The Knicks ended their season on March 31st when they were eliminated from playoff contention. Still, the fact that this streak, this particular streak, has gone on from 1947 through 2021. Oh, now 22. 21 22 season. There has been an ex Knicks player on every single, on, on, on one of the roster for the NBA Finals since 1947. And the streak continues this year. So, you know, again, ex players for the Knicks leave. They leave the New York Knicks, and then they end up going to the oh, at least one player from that team from the Knicks goes to be on a different team in the NBA Finals, dating back to 1947. Isn't that crazy? Uh, I mean, that's, that's pretty wild. So Bobby Portis uh, in 2021, J.R. Smith 2020, Jeremy Lin, J.R. Smith, Matt Barnes, Channing Fry, David Lee, Tony Douglas with the Miami Heat, Tracy McGrady with the Spurs. Eddie Curry, Tyson Chandler, Nate Robinson in 2010. It goes back. I mean, they, they don't they don't have enough lists to. You know what's weird about that list though is every one of those guys was like a role player. Well, yeah, no, they, it there it doesn't specify like big time. It's just no a single player, but from the Knicks, it's leaves. just a random part of it's a random stat <laughs> because those guys didn't lead their team to a. NBA Finals. They no, were no. Just, like, <laughs> to be on the team that made it to the NBA Finals, almost. It's a complete time. like, like, like funky thing. It's just like someone noticed on Reddit. So Reddit, everything people people can find yeah. anything on Reddit. People really. have too much time, too much time. To but this. a Reddit user pointed out the phenomenon in 2019 after the Toronto Raptors advanced to that year's finals. And Jeremy Lin was on that Toronto roster, maintaining the New York streak of former, current, or future players in every single NBA Finals. Go figure. X-ray is right, though. Most of them are washed. They are also. They're all washed. But, I mean, if I'm a bench player on the New York Knicks, 
I mean, I leave. I feel good about my chances of going to the NBA Finals. Yeah, I don't care if I'm sitting on the bench or whatever. I'll take it. Milwaukee. Mellow's, Mellow's never made a final. Closest he came was a Western Conference final with the Nugs, where they lost in 6 to Kobe and the Lakers. Um, but no, Mellow's never made a final. Remember last season when we thought the Knicks would be good? Yeah, that faded pretty quick. Wait, wait. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Who thought that? I I didn't, thought, I didn't. Well, the Knicks had a decent run going into the playoffs, and then they fizzled out in the playoffs. And then Last this, year? and then this year, I was like, "Oh, I think they can, they can make some moves." And uh, I didn't, th- I didn't have them as a top seed, but I thought they could make the playoffs. And yeah, that didn't happen. They were all a tryhard team, and that eventually dies. Any talent isn't good enough there. So let's move on to the next one, and we're going to slowly inch into our NBA Finals preview here. Uh, But I want to talk about Steph. A lot of people are talking about Steph in the media. There's a lot of people talking about, like, KD and Steph and, oh, KD, like, left. And what does that say about him? And there's a lot lot of legacy stuff happening here. But let me throw this out here. Let me throw this out here. Last year was the Julius Randle MVP talk, LOL. Absurd. Absurd. <laughs> like Julius Randle was an MVP candidate in talks for MVP candidate. It's that just shows you the whole landscape of uh, what the Knicks were doing last year. Uh, the flash in the pan. But I, I have a question for not only you, Scotty, but everyone in the chat. Obviously, Michael Jordan was a very influential person when it came to basketball. He changed the game on a world level. You know, he had influence with marketing, style, brand, winning at all costs, like that that killer instinct, right? So, obviously, he did change the game quite a bit, but was he as influential as Steph Curry? Now, Steph Curry, he's changed the game for everybody, right? You can't go to an AAU game, a college game, a high school game. You can't go to the street ball court anywhere and not see someone shooting like three feet behind the three-point line right steph curry has changed the way kids play basketball nowadays in this it, it, like you know he's won before kd during uh, during kd after kd obviously he's a very influential talent colin cowherd had a little spiel on him you know talking about how he's the most influential player ever is he right? And B-Rock asks, are we talking on the court only? And I would say yes. We're talking like how he influences how other people play. Like right? the entire sport. The sport. Okay. He has changed the sport. I think this is obvious. I think he's changed the sport more than any other singular player in the history of the, of the game. With his ability and what he has done, it's changed the game. The game has became a, you either get a layup or a dunk, or you get a three-point shot. And that's kind of what the game is right now. You could argue whether that's a good thing for the game. Some would argue it's a great thing. Some would argue it's the worst thing that's ever happened in the NBA. But in my mind, I don't think it's close. Steph has influenced the game and changed the way the game has played on the court more than any player in my lifetime for sure including the best of the best the jordans the lebrons it doesn't matter because he did something that no one else could do before and now everyone's trying to replicate that and teams are trying to replicate that they they get more analytical now and they want to focus on the three-point shot and this and that and it makes sense to do it but steph has changed the game more well, than anyone and you think Go about down, you think about you how it's ch- you, it, you, you're maximizing the three-point option when you're when teams are shooting threes and you're dumping the ball down low that's what got rid of all of the uh the post uh, post ups for centers that's what's making centers starting to go out and play the three ball a little bit more right you got Jokic, you got Embiid hitting threes you got i mean Giannis can hit a three once in a while you know and and bigs are starting to train i mean you look at the draft coming up and you have Chet Holmgren. He can hit threes. He's very dynamic. You're changing the way three-pointers 
are valued in the in today's NBA game. Like it wasn't a it wasn't as big of a, a deal back in the 80s and 90s and 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 you know before then, right? It's a different game. And I think that when Steph came in and just changed the way you shoot, and it's all about I mean, you could hit shots three feet behind the line. All of a sudden you see start to see Damian Lillard hitting extra range. You start seeing Trey Young at range. You start seeing all these different players stepping back. That didn't happen before Steph happened. Steph came into the league. He changed everything. And that's how it is. Uh, B-Rock in the chat. No, MJ is the most influential because he took it global. But he did it from a global branding, from a marketing, from a... His, he, was, he didn't change the way the game was played. He changed the popularity of the game. And he will be the most popular player to ever exist in my lifetime, I think, in the NBA is Jordan. And he changed the game globally and made it more popular. So it's two different arguments. It's Jordan changed the game globally more than anyone. I agree. Curry changed the way the game is played more than anyone. Jordan didn't do that. Because no one could replicate Jordan. You can't replicate Jordan. His athleticism was off the charts. And his work ethic was off the charts. Curry has that work ethic and is athletic, but... People see and now and you get the every sport is as evolved in analytics, right? There's a lot more analytical research and what works and what doesn't in every sport, whether it's football, basketball, baseball, anything, hockey, all of it. But the combination of analytics and Curry has taken the three point line to a new level where at times at times I don't know if it's great for the NBA because we've talked about these playoffs a lot of blowouts and that's to me that's prefaced on you have the three-point shot so important that if a team's on they're gonna win and if a team's off they're gonna lose and they don't know how to adjust and and change their game based off that they're gonna just keep shooting threes and that's kind of how the game is now but um i i don't hate the game i i don't know if it's better or worse but certainly more influence from Curry on how kids growing up right now are, are playing the game and how they're reacting and how they're shoot they work on their shot. And no one, no one is working on their elbow jumper. No one's working on the mid range at this point for better or worse. That's just the reality. When I go to the gym, I'm the only one in the gym. I'm so I, I work out at the local rec center every single day. And I try to like, you know, I, I a warm up playing basketball and I'm always, I'm, I'm old school. I'm, 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 you know, doing post ups. I'm doing mid range, mainly because like my three ball has never been very good. I can, I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm more of a mid range. Uh, you know, I can handle the rock. I got, I, I told you, Scotty, I can, I can shake and bake. But I, I, you know, I work on my mid range. I know you got some range. I know you can hit the three. Mm -hmm. You've been watching a lot of that Steph Curry. But I look I, around the gym. I was, I was borderline step before Steph. <laughs> You, you you were you, you pre your, your predecessor i i was analytical in my heyday because i'm like Bruh. why would i not shoot behind the line where i get more points from <laughs> why would i not do that if i can make it um but i look around the gym and i see everybody shooting threes every single shot kids that are like 10 years old upwards of Adults that, you know, I mean, adults a little bit mix it up a little bit, but I mean, high schoolers all shooting threes. That's all they shoot. They don't, I didn't see them take a single two point shot. They, they'll do layups when they miss the shot or whatever, but that's just the way Steph has changed the way people play the game, even just through shoot around. And you see it at the, at the gym when people are playing pickup and it's like, you always have that guy that's shooting the threes. That's always like the black hole. You never get the ball back once the ball goes to him, right? But it's crazy. It's crazy. Uh, and I think, you know, that makes Steph a one of a kind when it comes to changing the landscape of recruiting and basketball, AAU, college, high school, everything. Rec wants a Rec versus Scott three point contest. Rec, believe me, you don't. You don't, want, you, don't want that. you don't want any part of that. I would love. Right. I I feel like that would be a good contest. I can feel it all the way down in my plums. Um, you don't want any any part of that. Just give me like ten minutes of warm up and it's done. X ray. Now, I don't shoot as much as I used to, so you know. 
Dr. J wants a Scotty A. Smith versus Chris IRL. Ooh, you, what? action lab shooting. Let's content. do it. Let's do it. Let's have some fun with it. We could do that. We uh, could do that sometime. I'm a, I'm a, let me add it to my notes here because I always add add ideas to my notes. Uh, let's see. Shootout. IRL. Let's go. Do, uh, X-ray doc. He's right. You have seven footers shooting threes now. I mean, that's that's a prereq. I mean, if you're a big in the in the college ranks, if you're not shooting threes, your draft stock drops to uh, compared to those who can. Right? Like you, Chet Holmgren's at the top of the draft because he could if he couldn't shoot threes. Well, the one two Jabari Smiths. He's like six ten. Yeah. He's the other guy that's gonna. He's. Probably those are the top two picks right there. Katie hitting threes, James Harden. They changed rules because of him, and now players know it works to get a max deal. Not a uh, then play. Not, yeah. Yeah. So and, and then even after like five games of being traded, Cuban, you can quit on your team. James Harden is Oh man. Philly's so screwed with James Harden. <laughs> but they're the gonna have to offer him a max, and it's gonna be the worst deal ever. Oh my goodness! You know how sick it is to like if you're Philly that you have to offer a max. If I, I would feel sick to my stomach. The uh, bu- bu- the only one that hasn't caught on is Westbrook. I mean Westbrook says Doc uh, says X uh, X Ray. Like I said, that is Steve Kerr letting letting Steph Curry do what he does. Uh, no, Curry was doing that. At Davidson, Curry was doing that when Jackson was their coach, Mark Jackson. Like Cur- I mean, Curry's Curry. And Steve Kerr would be an awful coach to not let him do what he does, quite frankly. Oh, Steve Kerr would have been fired a long time ago if he didn't let Steph cook. 100%. People think Steph is small and kid just uh, are like, so that, so then why kids and young people chuck up threes? It's not even threes. It's the borderline out of range shooting for these guys, says McDuggets. Red rubber, red rubber reckoning. What the hell are you trying to do? Yeah. <laughs> challenging even, an old challenging even, an old man. Even monkey knows you're making a mistake here. You can challenge an old man reckoning, but I'll, I can still listen. Old man can still shoot. I don't even have to jump anymore to shoot. I can still drain shots. Okay. He, Supposedly he could drain shots, reckoning. I don't know. I hope you can keep up. Uh, that's more Dirk than Steph. Stretch fours and fives aren't really Steph, says B. Well, oh, yeah, no, but the whole game's spaced out now. The whole game is spaced out. Where I literally looked last night at game game two. I, weirdly, I was looking at box scores. Game two of Bulls Lakers. Jordan's first title, I think it was in 91, maybe 1991, somewhere around there. Uh, Bulls lost by a point in game one. Game two, they won 107 to 86. They won 107 to 86. In that game, they went 0 for 5 from three. That's how drastically the game has changed now. <laughs> the team, uh, the Bulls won by 21 and put up 107. And they went over five from three in the game. They didn't even take threes. Like it wasn't even. It was. Now Jordan went fifteen of eighteen in that game with thirteen assists and like seven boards. He was a monster. But at the same time, it was just so different. Then, can you imagine a team winning an NBA final game now and not hitting a three? Like that would be out of this world. And they won by twenty-one. It's crazy. It's crazy. Uh, it, you wouldn't see that nowadays, for sure. But my corner three is deadly, says Reckoning. You better be. It better I, be. I feel like your corner three hits the backboard more than it does the rim or Ooh. the net. <laughs> I can't wait that's to get. Guess. That's my guess. Reckoning. Can we have a virtual shootout where it's like you know maybe a three point contest where you know I can track Scotty and we can have you I on video as well, Reckoning. I was gonna doctor the film. He's gonna doctor. He's gonna take a hundred shots and just piece together the ten he makes somehow. Let's see, and that is why Embiid is the best center. Mm. Stop it, McDuggets. Stop it. Stop it. McDuggets. I love I you, McDuggets. You, that's a joke. 
thoughts on the new Madden cover? We talked about that a little bit earlier, Reckoning. We loved it. Like, uh, the, I, mean, I mean, it's a layup. You, you it's, have a, it's a layup. You can't go anywhere else with that Madden cover besides John Madden, right? Like, it, it, it's it's a uh, it's a sh it's a gimme. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you had to go with Madden this year. Like, people would have freaked out if you didn't. And so it's the right choice. So with all the Steph Curry talk, it leads us to the big kickoff for tomorrow night and uh, or just a or a tip off chris or you always love the word kickoff kickoff and that is not all sports kickoff this one tips off tip off i'll i'll give it to you i, I need to i need to get my uh amanda Lorian's. she's all about her warriors pretty she's, pretty neutral I don't know what that logo is, but I think she's neutral on this match. She, she, there's no way she has a, a dog in the fight. No, no. way. Well, we no. have an interesting matchup, and that is, and and reckoning maybe. Uh, I don't know if you could put a poll in the chat on who who you think. I, I w I'd be curious to see what the chat feels. We have a bunch of you guys watching and and participating. Thank you guys so much. If you're here and you're in the background lurking, if you're hanging out. Join in the chat. We have a lot of fun here. We have a great community that's going to welcome you in. Make sure you're leaving your thoughts about the NBA Finals. But reckoning, throw in who people think will win the NBA Finals, Boston or Golden State. I would love to see what everyone votes. But we have an interesting matchup here because we have the Celtics coming out of the East, Warriors coming out of the West. Obviously, the Warriors were pretty much favored for... A majority of the latter part of the playoffs based off of just Jordan Poole's emergence and Steph Curry and what what they've been doing across the whole landscape of the, the Western Conference. And then Boston has been the hottest team since the second half of the season. They end up punching their ticket to the NBA Finals. And, you know, we have an interesting matchup because you have the Celtics who can defend the perimeter a little bit better than most teams, but they have a size advantage down low. But that doesn't matter when you have big time shooters on the other side and you have Steph Curry and Jordan Poole and Clay Thompson just draining threes on you. It's a little bit different story. So we have a little bit of an offensive versus defensive. Now Boston has a nice little offense as well. They can still shoot threes and you have Jason Tatum emerging as a big time superstar. Let's see if he could do it on the big stage because this is his opportunity to do that. Steph's already been here. Draymond and Clay, they've already been here. You know, they've seen, they, they know what to expect. Do the Boston Celtics know what to expect when it comes to their, you know, freshness in this big spotlight game uh, series? So that'll be interesting. We have the poll in the chat. We already have five Warriors to two Celtics in the chat versus uh, for the vote on the current poll. If you guys think the Celtics are going to win, you better start voting. Uh, otherwise, Warriors are running away with this one early. Hey, Mackie! Mackie. Thank, Thank you for you the for three, three months. Three months, Mackie. Welcome. How you doing, Welcome. MacGyver? How what are you? It do. Let's go. Six to three, Warriors over Celtics in the poll. Vote, vote, vote. I want to see what all of you guys think. JK55, what's going on? Welcome. Welcome. Um, hey, guys. Real quick, he's like, what, off topic, any idea... Uh, where was it? Any idea what happened to Spees? Spees, obviously, Spees and Benchmark Show were a Twitch show that we were really good friends with those guys. Great, great guys. They ended up uh, shutting down their show, unfortunately, which was, you know, it broke our hearts. Obviously, we love Spees and Benchmark. But you might not have seen the last of Spees. They uh, they wanted to, they, they felt they ran their course with their show. And they were, you know, I talked to him about it a little bit. And he was just saying it was just time. They both had a lot going on and they both had other aspirations outside of streaming and they're going to pursue those endeavors. So we support them and everything, but anytime we have some Houston news, doesn't mean we can't reach out and get some correspondence from down South. So don't be shocked if you ever, you know, go out and uh, tune into our show and Spees and the benchmark might be joining us here on a stream. So, yeah, no, they'll be around. Uh, Warriors winning the six, the vote six wins or six votes for the Warriors in our poll. So, yeah, that's the story for Spees. But welcome back in, JK. Don't forget about Wiggins' inconsistency. Okay. Wiggins, obviously, he was an all star this year. 
Was yeah, an but <laughs> he's an all-star and inconsistent, but he's like their fifth most important player. True, true. Warriors winning in six, says Mackey. Toronto beat the Warriors three to two. It could happen, says Indians. Uh, Kevin, uh, Kevin and Clay got injured. Name someone not named Curry who put in work, says McDuggets. Most underrated sports show, period, says Mackie, right here. Hey, appreciate that, Mackie. Mackie, we love you too, By buddy. the way, uh, Mackie, I believe you still have your show going on, right? Uh, if you do, go give uh, Mackie some love. Uh, he has his own show on Twitch, so there is the link. We always like to support our Action Lab Rats when they decide to do their own thing. So that's cool. Indians fan at McDougat's. I forgot about that, but Warriors up 3-1, still blew it versus the Cavs. Thanks a lot for answering my question. I appreciate it. Glad they brought me to your stream. Hey, we're glad you're here, JK. It's it's Absolutely. I can't by the way, uh, I can't wait for NFL season. If you guys are here, wait till NFL season. We we go even harder than we do now. So that's that's uh you know. Um Rangers Chris, in seven. Chris, who you got in this one? Who you got in the NBA finals? I'll let you kick us off or tip us off here. <laughs> kick us kick kick us off? Tip us off. Uh it's hard for me to go against Golden State, man. Like they just what they do is so hard to defend over the course of a series. You got Draymond who, you know, he can mucky up uh, like he can he can make a game really ugly just by himself. <laughs> You have Steph Curry, Clay, or Jordan Poole. One of them's not having a good day. The others do. Like, it's just, there's not really, you can't just defend that many shooters efficiently at the three point line. And it's just, you could take away Steph, but then Clay burns you. You could take away Clay, and then Jordan Poole burns you, or, or Steph. I mean, Steph early on in the playoffs wasn't even playing a ton of minutes and they were getting they were torching teams i get the nuggets can't defend against you know some of the you know three ball you know they we just not not equipped for that dallas they could do it a little bit better but they still got torched uh game uh, certain games throughout the series where they just couldn't stop the three point shot and the warriors are just a smart team they have the experience with all that being said i got to go warriors in this one and I, I, I hate to say that because I really wanted the Boston Celtics to do something big this year, especially since they had like such an insane second half of the season. But the Warriors, I mean, they just have so much. I just, I just can't go against that realistically. So, my prediction for this, if I'm gonna make a prediction. I think Warriors in seven. It, it's a long series. I don't think it's a it's a quick series, but Tatum needs to show up big if they're going to win this. And then Marcus Smart needs to be a big time defender on the three point. Oh man, it's going to be a fun East Coast versus West Coast series, though. I got I got I got Golden State. Um, catching up in the chat real quick, like. Uh, Mackie Pedigree gonna take this one. Golden State has been here before. McDougat's doesn't Vegas got Boston at eighty six percent for the series? Hey, football I wife, resub for six you. months. Well, Thank you for the six football months. Football wife not even gifting at a sub, just resubbing herself for a change. Thank you um, so much. Love you, football wife. You're amazing. You're a VIP. You are wonderful. Thank you for hanging in here with us. Absolutely. Uh, I know your passion's football, and we're we're getting closer and closer to that football wife. As hard as it is, as you as a Bengals fan, when you dominate my Chiefs left and right uh, this <laughs> past year. But anyway, going back to this NBA Finals, uh, McDougal, McDougat said, doesn't Vegas got Boston at 86% for the series? So I think I saw that as like a... That was like an ESPN BPI. I mean, Vegas has... If you bet on who to win this series, the Warriors are the favorites. Um, the ESPN BPI is like a stupid... I, I don't buy it at all. I hate to do this, Chris, but I'm going to agree with you. Ooh. I, I want to go against you. Um, I just think the Warriors are more rested. I think... I mean, the, the Celtics are coming up off back-to-back seven-game series against the Bucks and the Heat. Those legs can only hold up for so long. 
you have the shooting prowess of all right you have marcus smart as a defender on the perimeter but one he's not going to take away curry but even if he does you have other guys you have pool you have thompson you have wiggins if he steps up wiggins you yeah got, you know obviously like i just feel like the warriors are more adept and more ready to win this one i like what boston's doing i think it's going to be a good series i hope for the love of god most games are close like we have True. a lot of close games that come down the wire I, I'd rather it go five games with five close games than seven games with four blowouts. Like, I just I, I just want to see close matchups, quite frankly. So, for me, uh, Mandalorian is shocked, but <laughs> you I'm, sh- not a, I'm not a Warriors hater at all. I've always been a Steph fan my entire life. Like, I've always cheered for Steph and the Warriors, especially when they're playing Cleveland and LeBron. And some of those series. So, uh, no, I, I'm taking the Warriors here. I like the Warriors to win. Um, it wouldn't shock me. Like, I don't think it's like a foregone conclusion. It wouldn't shock me if the Celtics pull this off. If Tatum and Jalen Brown and Marcus Smart hit shots. Um, but give me the Warriors. I'm on board with you, Chris. Okay. All right. So, what do you got? You got you got a long series. What do you what do you have it in? Uh, I'd probably say six and, and McDuggets. You got Draymond to worry about. Not, not on the offensive end. No, no, but well, but as a passer, as a passer, the dude's pretty damn good. I'm I'll gonna give take him a, spot. a quick code yellow and grab a, another beer. I'm, I'm going Spam through it. Spam code, code yellow, yellow in the chat, guys. I'm always terrible at doing this. Spam code yellow in the chat for Chris. As I don't even know if he's going to the bathroom or he's just grabbing another beer or maybe both he said he's grabbing a beer but um i don't know why dr j and a mandalorian are so surprised i'm picking the warriors i'm not a warriors hater i actually like steph a lot uh my uncle-in-law that's a weird thing to say asked me last night he's like do you like steph and i'm like i've always liked steph i've liked steph since he entered the league um so i'm not a warriors hater at all uh, I mean, I hated when they dominated my my Nuggets this year, but the Nuggets weren't going anywhere without with all the injuries anyway to Jamal and MPJ. So, um, no, I don't hate on the Warriors. I can give them some love. I appreciate the shooting prowess they have, and we'll see. I think the biggest key is actually going to be Jordan Poole. If Jordan Poole can continue, if Jordan Poole's like he was against the Nuggets. Game over. The Celtics have no chance in this series. Um, I don't know if Jordan Poole can consistently do that all the time, and he hasn't really done that to that level against the Nuggets at least, but if Jordan Poole's how he was against the Nuggets, no one's going to compete with that with that Warriors team. And Dr. J, Jordan Poole's going to be looking for a payday after the season. Absolutely. As he should. And I don't know. I don't know. I know the Warriors are already over the the salary cap and they're in, you know, luxury tax hell. And I don't know what that means for Jordan Poole, whether they need to try and trade him or they can sign him. I haven't looked into him enough. I'll look that in the offseason. But Jordan Poole is going to get paid for sure. And the Warriors have to pay him. They can't lose Jordan Poole because he's... He's like the foundational piece moving forward. You have these guys that are getting a little older in age, and Jordan Poole's that that young guy that's going to carry you into that next generation. Along with, I love Kaminga moving Kaminga's forward. Big. Maybe not, not not this year for the Warriors, but I love Jonathan Kaminga for the Warriors moving forward. Him and Poole would be nice. Like a lot of times when your dynasty falls, you have to rebuild. Coming and pool would be a nice starting point once you're you have to move on from a lot of these major pieces you have in Curry and Draymond and uh Clay. Time to send Draymond packing, says Dr. J. If you want to send him to Denver, we'll take that. Oh, I'll take him in Denver. No. 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 <laughs> no. I'll no, take him in Denver. Chris. No, Chris. Uh, agree. No. Jordan Poole is the X Factor, says Mackie. Steph's a good player class act and here's the thing man he's done it he's done it with a lot of different teams like if you think about you know he was 
taken the warriors to success oh, before like a lot of a lot of different warrior teams yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. so um like you know he's been on one team in his career i mean before kd joined in and made them a super team he was winning there before he got there then he won with kd then he won he's winning without you know a big time you know role play i mean obviously clay is a big time player don't get me wrong and but like if you look oh, at this roster super talented yeah they i mean the they warriors have, are crazy talented they have a talent but i mean super superstar wise i mean they have a bunch of good players but when you had kd that was like a that 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 was a lot of the debates that were taking place in the in the national media this past week because oh well now that kd what does that say about kevin durant the fact that he came in and you know what how big of a uh, of a impact was he given the fact that Steph is can do it with or without him and you know obviously KD is like an elite he's 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 a top talent in the entire world when it comes to the game of basketball so i'm not taking that away from him but i mean the decision making for KD has come into question with some of those guys on the national media as well a lot of different opinions on that i don't know I mean, Katie's mentally like Katie just needs to stay off the internet. And he <laughs> she said he just just don't just stay off the internet, dude. I mean, he Keep kind of remember that time he had the burner account on the Twitter burner account, oh. and he was like, <laughs> it was like super awkward. He got just exposed. Worry about your teammate Kyrie <laughs> Irving a little more than you do what people are saying on the internet about you. A hundred percent. But uh, um, catching up in the chat, Mackie D agrees with me as he should. Jordan Poole is the X factor. Um, Dr. J, you, you said, uh, send Draymond packing. Would the Nuggets take LeBron at this stage in his career? For for who? I would. I mean, I hate LeBron, but I would. For I mean, it depends on what we're giving up. Are we giving it? If that- we're not giving up Jokic or Jamal. The rest are the rest. I would part with in a second. You're paying for the brand name of, and I don't think there's anything. Ooh, I disagree. Well, you're all right. So he could still play. He's on the downside of his career. He could still. I mean, even at this point, LeBron is better on the downside than ninety percent of the NBA, most likely. Right? Name name me a better three next year in the NBA than a healthy Jamal, a Jokic who's back to back MVPs. And LeBron James. No, theoretically, there's no, there's no, there's no better three. No, theoretically, no better, it, it's no perfect. Three. But I, I, I was thinking I mean, for more of a, it won't happen. It doesn't well, matter. That, I was thinking from a serious standpoint. Maybe I was thinking too serious of a standpoint because I, I was like, that's not going to happen. So I'm not going to worry about it. But maybe. no, it would be. Yeah. I mean, if 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 we're playing with monopoly money, then yeah, no, I would take him in a heartbeat. It, it, that's reckoning, easy. reckoning. Uh, Block McDuggets from the chat because he put quotes on MVP on Jokic. Uh, block him from the chat immediately. <laughs> you can't put quotes on a guy who's won it back to back years. McDuggets can't do that when he's won it back to back. All right, Roger, Roger. Yep, pretty much, pretty much. Uh, Night, Night crash. crash. I hey. do want to become famous. Thank Night. <laughs> Asking, asking. How wanna, do I say that? Welcome in uh, the Ace Gang. The oh, you said it. Right. <laughs> that makes more sense. The Ace Gang. Welcome in. How you doing, Ace? Uh, where are you from, and who's your team? Like to get to know you a little bit. Are you a fan of uh, NBA, NHL? What you got? Uh, let's let's all welcome in Ace Gang to the Action Lab Rat family. Let's go. Thank you, thank you so much for the follow. It means a lot. We are getting closer. We are almost, what are we, 27 away from 500? Let's go. Let's go. Not even near that Ooh. 469 figure He's anymore. got the dubs. He's got the dubs. Yeah. Okay. We said, it, we said it too. We're both on the dubs in this one as well. So welcome to the comfort zone with us. Of agreeance. Yes, uh, we are both Nuggets fans. You're on the you're on the right side. We, uh, as far as the series goes, we definitely like what uh, the Warriors can bring to the table when it comes to the NBA Finals. So, welcome in Ace Gang, and let's again, all of you guys, give Ace a nice, warm welcome. 
Any other storylines in this one? I, I feel like Marcus Smart is going to be a big key contributor to the Boston side of things when it comes to his defensive ability in defending the, the three. But then uh, they have to throw I, a lot of guys out there. They, there's there's a lot of... I think it's going to be more important that he can hit shots on the offensive end. than be. Well, he's going to be who he is on the defensive end, which may at times take away one guy, but it's not one guy with the Warriors. It's four guys that can hit the three. It like I don't think his presence on defense is going to matter that much. I think his ability to make shots on the offensive end is going to be more important. And I think Tatum has to take over, like he has been in certain games over the course of the playoffs. I mean, he's he's established himself. He needs to raise the bar and continue to raise that bar even further. And I just think the inexperience for Boston. I mean. They've had a couple guys who have, you know, made some playoff runs and things along those lines. But, I mean, Al Horford, I mean, he saw him in tears on the court. Just on, like, Al Horford's been in the league for, like, 100 years. And, you know, even he doesn't have that finals experience. So, you know, it's, there's just, the Warriors know what to expect when it comes to what the, the finals brings, realistically. Hmm, didn't ask me my favorite team when I was first joined the chat room. Maybe the name gave it away, says Broncos. Uh, yep. Maybe a little bit. Maybe just a little bit. I had a feeling you're in the altitude chat. You're in like our chat. I have a and, good hunch. And despite that, Broncos, I'm still going to hook you up with Rocky's tickets. Despite yeah. that poor screen name choice. <laughs> you, you got you hooked up. Dr. Joe, uh, Al Horford is a dinosaur. Yeah, he's, yeah. Gosh, he's been in the league. I mean, Udonis only, Haslam. Only eclipsed by, I was going to say, only eclipsed by Udonis Haslam. Udonis Haslam, I don't know how he still has a roster. But like, it's just kind of like... He's he, like a player coach. He's not really a real player on your team. He's just like a coach that's technically on the roster. Have you ever fun. had one of those like contracts where you're grandfathered in to like an old deal? That's Al Horford. He's he's that grandfather. Or I mean, not, not, not Al Horford. Uh, Udonis Haslam. That's who that is. He's 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 grandfathered into being on the roster for the Miami Heat for the rest of his life. I think that's that's the deal he made with the Miami Heat and Pat Riley. Probably. Uh, Cuban Benny's like Broncos, nineteen sixty-seven. Bishop Sycamore is that your favorite <laughs> team? Could be. Bishop Sycamore Could be is a great option if you're if you need a team to cheer for. Udonis Haslam is there to brawl just in case, says Mackie. Love you too, Scott, says Broncos. <laughs> well, you didn't say that. Love you too, Scott? With a question mark? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all good, Broncos. It's roger, all roger. good. Grant Williams is going to cause problems. Yeah, I think he's uh, he's another one that they're going to try to throw, you know, try to muck up some of the what the Warriors are trying to do. I think, I mean, here's the thing. We saw a little bit of a size disadvantage with Denver and Jokic. Like that was a like that's the one thing the Warriors don't have an advantage in is size. But again, it doesn't matter when, you know, the other team is shooting threes and you're shooting twos, even if you get a lot, bunch of points in the paint. You live by the three and die by the three. So there will be games where the Warriors won't hit threes and they will lose those games. They just don't have a lot of those games. Like there's too many guys to go cold for that to happen and if one if curry's cold steph and jordan pool will, will pick it up if I, clay's 0 for 5 we've seen that happen then i you know it comes down to with two minutes to go in a close game i trust the warriors a lot more than yep. i do the Celtics. yeah i mean the celtics almost had the worst game seven loss we've ever seen they almost choked that game away. A Jimmy Butler wide open three away from maybe losing that game seven when they had no business losing that game seven. I just don't trust them. I don't trust that Boston team moving forward. Uh, I think the Warriors are more experienced. They're more ready. They're they're going to win this. <laughs> Dr. J's right. Andre Iguodala is more of a dinosaur for the Warriors. He has been playing since 2004. Yep. I Iggy, Iggy's yeah. been around for a while too. Why do they keep talking about like Iggy might be healthy enough for the finals? Who gives a shit? Why would you even <laughs> put him in? 
<laughs> what does he even offer you at this point? What has he done? He offer you anything? Uh, yeah, Iggy. Chill, Iggy. Call it, call it a career, man. It's done. It's done. Udonis Haslam wasn't doing shit when he was in the starting power forward, so he really doing the same thing. Yeah. Iggy knows D, says McDuggets. Yeah. So it'll be an interesting series. Maybe, but now he's old as shit. I don't know if he knows D. Well, he needs to know seeing court time because he's always hurt because he's so old. Like he he just can't stay healthy. That's just part of being uh, you know, around the league for so long. But it's gonna be an interesting series. I think I, I want it to be a closer series. Like I'm with you. I don't want to see blowouts. I don't want to see, you know, a four O sweep or, uh, or anything along those lines. I want to see a competitive series. And I think it should be, I, I, again, I said warriors in seven, but I can see warriors in six as well. I think it's going to go at least six or seven. It's not going to be like a four one or anything. I think Celtics are too good on both sides of the basketball to let that happen. And I think the warriors might, need a feeling out and maybe game one potentially, but I still think they come out fast because they've been rested. And that's what, I mean, Steve Kerr coaching matters. Coaching advantage goes to the Warriors. He's been around and Steve Kerr knows how to get his guys. He knows his guys. He's been to war with them already. They'll be the, the best bet you can ever make in this series is Warriors second half of game one. Whatever the line is, doesn't matter. Warriors second half line game one. They will cover. <laughs> Tired legs a little bit in Celtics. They got a few days off, but Warriors are rested. We saw this in the conference finals. The rested teams were both losing at halftime and absolutely dominated the second half. So give me that second half with the rested team. That's something I'll be betting. If you want an easy bet, maybe not an easy bet, but the bet I like the most, take Warriors second half, game one, halftime. Warriors whooping them game one. Cuban Benny, Iggy getting finals MVP is why I keep thinking there's hope for Thrill to get it. Of course. Mm. Before you say I'm crazy, the playoffs is crazier. The payoff is crazy. Or the payoff. The payoff. <sighs> Cuban, I'm sorry. You know I love you. You know I love you. <laughs> <laughs> but I do not want to see Will Barton on the Nuggets roster next year. I would like to see a trade for something else. I don't want to see I don't want to see Will Barton on the on the Nuggets roster. I'm sorry, Cuban. I know you love him. I know you do. And I appreciate your love for him. But he has to be gone. McDuggets yawn. Well, it's about that time. Have a great uh have a great morning. Uh, so, McDuggets, thank you for stopping by. We will be back live here. What's today? Is today Wednesday? Today's Wednesday. Today, it, this whole is week Wednesday. with the holiday is I'm thrown off. I'm like, what day is it even? So, we'll see you back here Sunday. Sunday night. Is there a game Sunday night? What? Which game is? What do we have Sunday night? Um. So Thursday, Friday, Saturday. It's not. It's not Warriors and Celtics because there would be. Good news. Chris knows the days of the week. So um, he <laughs> followed. He was like Thursday, Friday, Saturday. He got all those in order. Hockey's every night. So that's true. We're going to have a hockey game. It's not going to be our abs. It's going to be the Rangers lightning again. Um, and the NBA schedule. Saturday is when they th Thursday, yeah. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Yeah. Anyways, so we'll be back here live so let's let's no 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 wait no they play thursday sunday so sunday night we'll be catching the second half of the uh boston golden state game too on sunday okay so we have a lot to cover here so uh let's let's give let's give mcduggets a little nice jr smith wave we'll see you later on sunday mcduggets and uh have a great rest of your week i hope you have a fantastic work week school week Every uh, anyone who's leaving uh, or hanging out, we we are at the top of the hour actually, ten o'clock. So we are going to be wrapping up here very soon. But before we go, we always like to get in uh, uh, some fun and games. So let's try to get in our Weddle and Podal. What do you think, Scotty? And yeah. then, I, but real quick, Football Wife says Sunday night is my birthday party. Happy birthday! Happy birthday, Football Wife! <laughs> what are you doing for your birthday party? 
should we celebrate besides with- joining the stream you're probably putting it our stream on like your big screen you probably have like an 80 incher that you're just putting us on and everyone can commentate and look forward to but even if you're not doing that happy birthday happy yeah Ooh, obviously. Obviously. spam football happy wife. birthday in the uh, chat uh if, uh if football wife uh, we hope that you're here i you, you're probably gonna be out celebrating your birthday so regardless happy birthday enjoy the day and uh just just know that we we love you absolutely Mackie, he's trying to make he's trying to instigate he's trying to make will thrill a thing um the only time i've met Mackie in person he was a big Houston fan at the time, and I tried to tell him that Yao and whoever else was in the, like Tracy McGrady wasn't enough. And he was lot he was like, No, we're gonna be great. And I was right then, and I think I'm right now. Will the thrill is not the answer to any question in the NBA. Okay. <laughs> it's just it's just not a not a thing. Uh oh. Football wife says, I will be here. My my birthday is Monday. Oh, oh, fair enough. Well, we'll have to celebrate for you. We'll, well have to celebrate. Regardless, happy 25th birthday, football wife. That's a big year for all of us. It is. It is. You mean a lot to us, football wife. Thank you and happy birthday. 100%. Let's Legit. see. B- 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 F for Marion Barber, by the way. It says Reckoning. <sighs> yeah, that's Marian. a sad story, Chris. I don't know if you saw that today, but Marion Barber, the former NFL running back um, passed away in his apartment today found dead so there were a lot of certainly a lot of issues and warning signs before this with him um, but regardless hate to see it hate to see it and we there's too many stories about like players dying recently it's weird in the NFL. Man. i don't like, like it i don't like it one bit way too young way too young this one this one i mean none of them are great obviously he was beyond his career but struggling in the aftermath and that's a real thing for a lot of players that we don't talk about is like what do you do after your career a lot of these players their life was football right and you get lost when football's over. Like, what are you supposed to do? What does your life entail after that? So how do you make it? And there's a lot of struggle there. And I think that's a guy in Marion Barber that struggled with that. And unfortunately, um, found dead in his room. Obviously, we have other stories this year, this this week alone with like active Jeff Gladney who was signed by the Cardinals after being a first round pick two years ago by the Vikings. Yep. Died in a car accident a a few days ago. Um, Man, there's just been too many deaths and it's, it sucks. It sucks. It's, I don't want to talk about those too long. No, it's it's unfortunate. You know, a rest in peace to those guys. Obviously it's, Never. It's part of sports when, you know, some of these things happen. You just hate to see them happen. Like, you just hope that it's like older guys that, you know, have lived a good life. And that's not always the case. And, uh, yeah, details of Haskins is crazy sad, too. So, so yeah. sad. So sad. So, uh, but let's, before we, let's leave on a high note here. Let's let's get some uh, Weddle and Podal in. And we're going to set you off for the rest of your work week, school week, whatever you have going and uh we'll make sure that you have a just downhill slide into the weekend it's been a short week for most of you if not all of you so hopefully that's the case and you guys can just get back into some of these games some of the things going on in the world and all that good stuff so let's go ahead let's do Potal first we're on the nba side of things so let's go ahead let's just try it dive into Potal. let's get oh yeah june it's there's no school in june so uh yeah whatever you have work week then that's right. No school. Summer school? I don't know. Is, is that a thing anymore? If, 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 if you're not good in school and you have to go to summer school, that's a Ooh. whole different thing. Westbrook. There we go. Uh, Potal. Uh, let's go. Westbrook? He, Westbrook was the the first pick. Okay. Uh, Western Conference. Okay. We have oh, sort, nice. of, sort of a guard in 6'4", 
Let me pull this up a little bit. Shockingly, the number is above zero, and the age is under 33. Bishop Sycamore is in high school. Or is in school, says football wife. <laughs> That's true. They're in school. They uh, it's all about academics with Bishop. They they don't uh, they don't take a rest day. Uh all right, so not in the Pacific, so I mean, is the answer Jamal Murray? Ja it's Moran. probably Jamal Murray. Okay. Ja Moran. No, but it's not well, oh never mind. Yeah. Do Ja. Do ja. Southwest division. So we got the right division, right? Got the exact age. Two. Lower than the number 12. And what was the other number? Uh, zero. <laughs> so, yeah, that is zero. Well, I mean, we're no, that, that helps a lot. We're in between one and 11. <laughs> what was the height in the first one, Chris? I can't see it. The height in the first one, 6'3. Six, 6'3. Three. Six, three. So, pick same height. So, 6'4, six, 6'5. Sort of a guard, southwest southwest division, but not Memphis. Twenty-two years of age. So young kid. He's a he's a young gun in the league. Mike Conley. I think Mike Conley's Mike a little Conley's older. way older and in Memphis. So, um, way younger. Zion, Southwest Zion. Height six. Oh, I mean, this is saying it's he's six. Zion's, Zion's taller than that, but we could do Zion for fun. Want to do Zion? Let's do Zion. It's not the Pelicans. It's not the Grizzlies. That leaves us with Spurs. Uh, the the Texas team. So we need Mackie to step up here. Come on, Mackie. I think we got leftover um so six Spurs, three Spurs Mavs and Rockets. Six six. So he wears number th so it's <laughs> one uh, so is number Zion wears number one. Age twenty one. We already know the age. I'm confused Under why six. it would be yellow for guard and forward. It's not a center. That's why this not the NBA is always tricky with this, right? So I have. It's not a I feel like I know. I have a guess. I have a guess. I don't know. I I, I want to guess like a Dejounte Murray or something. I um, want to guess Kevin Bo Kevin Porter Jr. All right, want to want to do that? Yes. And before this is right, I haven't I have not played the game. I don't know who is Kevin right. Porter Jr. We I got it. Right. <laughs> to qualify i swear on my life i did not play this before <laughs> i swear i didn't play there before. it is he is the total of the day there we go celebrate let's let's get it all right so let's go ahead let's jump into weddle weddle is ready to roll as well by the way guys hit that follow button if you have not already as always we like to make sure that you guys stick around and get all the notifications for all the things that we got going on. So, Deontay Johnson. All right. That's where we're kicking it off with Let's... Reckoning and a Deontay Johnson. This is the easy version of Weddle. So, we're talking QB, running back, wide receiver. Does it include tight end? I think it tight does. Tight end. Yep. Yeah. So, AFC. AFC, and it's not a wide receiver. Not... Also, not the North. So... Taller than five. Taller than six foot. Darren um, Waller. Okay. I'm comfortable with that. AFC West tight end. So we have a tight end in the AFC West. A six six. Uh, uh, he's he's under six it's six. Already, it's already done. It's already. Oh, no. It's not Kelsey. 
Oh wait, no. Waller's Age. 83. He's above 85. 29. He's older than 29. It's, so it's an older it's got, tight end. It's got to be it's got to be Kelsey. It's got to be there Trav. Kelsey. Easy. Let's go. I thought at one point Waller said 85 and I'm like it's not it, but <laughs> All right, last one, hard version of Weddle. This is anybody. So let's go ahead and just name out a random player. This could be special teams. It could be defense, offense. Uh, but, but what do we got? Reckoning Trent Jordan Watt. TJ. TJ. Uh, so it's a defensive player, defensive but not player. in the AFC. And less under 90 number, young, 24 or less. Um, this is this is secondary player, by the way, based off the height thing. It's a secondary player in the NFC. Micah that's Parsons? 24 or younger. No, Micah. Well, all right. Do it, actually. He might be shorter. 23? Got the age right. 23. Um, 23. Not a linebacker. Trayvon Diggs. No. No. Well, no, because no. it's not. Yeah, no, never mind. No, you're right. No. It's NFC South, North, or West. Um, It's a secondary player. I'm certain of it. Um, so safeties, corners. If you're looking for one of those types, Antoine Winfield. Right. Yeah, do that. I think he's older than 23, but he is 23. He is 23. So five nine. 31. So he's he's within the 30s. The 31. He's a little over 31. Uh, number also wise, not a safety. It's a corner because this dude is five ten, five eleven. Six two six one. This person is five eleven or six foot, which you wouldn't see on the defensive line. This is a corner that's five eleven or six foot, twenty three years of age, and number thirty two or thirty three in the NFC West or North. I'm trying to think. I want to say I want I'd rather go NFC West for some reason. I don't know why NFC West. Jair Alexander. I mean, he's older than 23. And he's but he is in the north. He's taller than that. I mean, we could eliminate a division. Yeah, it's not uh it's not a Dallas Cowboy. It's, and we can it's, figure out for sure it's a corner. So, bu 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 I'm trying to think NFC West. Let me see if I can break that. Um, God, there's so many options, but what do you guys got? NFC West, you got NFC North is also available. NFC North. So, corners and any of those. I feel like Milwaukee's best would always throw like out a pack. Uh, who was the Detroit corner that out of Ohio State that's been hurt? But he was like a top five pick. I feel like I like that choice a lot. Um, the Detroit corner? Detroit corner. He was a top five pick, but he's been hurt out of Ohio State. Uh, I'll get his name in a second because I'm going to look it up. Slay? Um, no, no, not Slay. Uh, no. It's, uh, Jeff Okuda? Okuda, yeah. Let's give it a try. I'll drink to that. Jeff Okuda. So it is the NFC North. It is a corner. And below six one, but not five ten or five eleven. So six foot. We have an NFC North corner that's six feet tall, and in between the numbers of two and actually no, not two or three. Oh, the number is higher than eleven. Why did I think it was lower than eleven? Never mind. NFC North corner, six feet tall. 
and 23 years old. But not not on Detroit. We'll get this. Um Cheers. Oh yeah, cheers, cheers. It's not oh, man, I, everyone I'm thinking of is like older. Like I'm thinking like Xavier Rhodes or you know, the, those guys are older. Which is natural. Um, I don't think it's a cowboy. Or no, we're in no, the we're North. we're we're in the NFC North. Yep. Um, I want to guess Jair just to eliminate a team. I feel like the Vikings take high picks every year at corner, and it doesn't work out, but they keep firing. Should we just guess uh, Jair just like reckoning wants to do, or what are you what are you feeling? Jair's way older than 23. And by way, Eric he's Stokes, definitely not 23. Says Dr. J. Stokes. Let's try Stokes. Nope. Oh, but we're we're getting closer and closer. Not Green Bay. Not Detroit. But six foot, 23 years old, corner in the NFC North. We've nailed it literally all the big pieces of it. I forgot all the NFL after the last drink. <laughs> Cuban. So, I think there's only one team. I think it's a bear. I think it's a Chicago bear. Um... Well, if we're talking Chicago Bears, ba, ba, ba. we got, I'm cheating right now. Kyler Gordon, Jalen Johnson. Jalen Johnson. Picked out of Utah. Yep, it's Jalen Johnson. No doubt. How do you spell Jalen? Uh, Owen. Owen. Jalen Johnson, there we go. It took us a minute to get there. Kyler Gordon, Dr. J said, no, almost, almost, Dr. J. Thank you for uh, throwing out the Eric Stokes and all the other guesses that all of you guys were throwing out. Uh, we got it. We got there. Jalen Johnson is the hard solution for Weddle this week. So there you have it. Uh, we have... We're, we're, I feel like you know there's some that throw us through a loop, but we always we always somehow get to the last. We're gonna get there. Yeah, no, the, the hard ones when you get to some of the weird, like positions and it's especially... always hard. Yeah, it's always hard when it's a bear, <laughs> right? Because yes. they're sort of irrelevant. But that's going to take us to the end of our show tonight. I hope you guys have had a fantastic night tonight with hanging out with us guys we've had a lot of people popping in and out of the chat a lot of you guys have been super amazing throughout the course of not only this show but every show that we've had obviously we've been you know dropping some vips there's some more vips we'll be dropping for all of you guys as time goes on so thank you so much for all of the love as you have always given we literally can't do this show without you so you know football wife mackie Moab, of course. Thank you so much, Marie, for dropping those those gifted subs. Doctor J, thank you for the follow. X Ray and X Ray, fellow Doc, the Ace, all of you guys. Uh, thank you so much. Also, offline when we were uh, not around, uh, Yufa Yufa Kife and H Town's finest. Thank you so much for the follows. Appreciate the love from just when we're not on around. I mean, that, that means our social media and all of our other, you know, stuff is, seems to be working well too. But again, guys, the biggest thing we need, we want to get to 500 followers on the platform. So if you guys know anybody else that wants to be a part of our Wednesday or Sunday nights, make sure you share the stream, make sure that they know how to get to us so that we can have some fun and get to know them a little bit better. Obviously, you know, we will be back here live on Sunday night. We will be covering some of the games that are going on and all the updates going on through all of the playoffs and then any other news that is we have going on as well. So 
Thank you so much, all of you guys. Uh, no rant of the week tonight. Uh, we didn't have... Scotty really wasn't feeling like a lot of rage this week. He was feeling really good, you know, about, you know, a lot of... Happy to be alive. Happy to be alive and everything else. So no rant of the week this week, but I guarantee he's going to be back with that soon. And I am building up to another why it matters because there's a couple things that I have on my mind as well. So we'll go into that on Sunday. So make sure you guys are tuning in for that. But thank Uh, you so much. Reckoning just said go Oilers. So go ahead and remove who's the, who's our mod that can remove people from the chat <laughs> scotty no rage amazing like even ah. mac is like what what's going Just on with feeling that good feeling good tonight love love the vibe <laughs> we got going guys spam, appreciate you spam jr smith guys spam jr smith uh all oh, the goodbyes <laughs> jr smith got uh honestly before interviewed before the first hole Pat Mahomes was like, uh, they're like, oh, what are you most nervous about? And he's like, my drives. And he's, I'm either, I'm either J.R. Smart, J.R. Smith, and I'm feeling it right off the bat, or I'm a mess. <laughs> he like referenced J.R. Smith, and it was perfect. It's amazing. I hey, hey it. old J.R. J.R. He's the, he's a golfer now. He, he, he check right off the bat. Like, hey, am I feeling good today or am I not? <laughs> Guys. Uh, we don't know what we would do without you. So thank you so much for all the love. Thank you for everything that you guys bring to our chat each and every single show. It means a lot. We will be in social media this week. I'll be posting a lot of our stuff, uh, a lot of our clips, everything to YouTube, to everything that we have going. Discord, if you haven't, uh, can you spam? Uh, can throw Discord in there, Reckoning, and I will do the socials. Uh, and we want you to join us on all of our other platforms. We are growing those quite a bit as well. I'm I'm gonna work on Twitter, so get involved on Twitter. If you guys aren't following us on Twitter, we're gonna we're gonna jump that and let's get involved on Twitter. I enjoy <laughs> it. That's where I'd like to be. That's where I'd like to live. Um, I get a lot of it. My one of my rants is going off on Instagram, Chris. We get notice noties all the yeah. time. My my rant on Ryan Tannehill. <laughs> Ryan Tannehill sucking. Um, it's pretty obvious that that should be correct, but uh, <laughs> people people are still looking at it. So, yes. regardless, yes, yes, love yes. you guys, appreciate you guys. Um, also, to today. we yeah. have uh, Thrive spammed in the chat as well, guys. Join Thrive if you like fantasy, if you like over unders. That's a way to do it. Free match up to a hundred dollars. So, join in and pick some over unders. I I'm going to get my Thrive contest up and running for the rest of this week, and I can't wait. So, yes. Uh, Raid. Raid. Mac. uh, uh, Who else is live right now? Let's see. Let's see if there's any other uh, streams. Mackie, you're not live, are you, Mackie? Nah, he's not. He's not live on Sundays. Let's see. Let me go ahead. Raid. Did we get a raid? Or are we expected to give a raid? I'm confused, Mackie. <laughs> Let's see who else is is live in the sports category. Because obviously we like to give some people some love here when it comes to other fellow sports streamers who are giving some amazing content out in the world. Uh, let's see. We have uh, BetMGM. You guys like betting? Uh, what else do we got here? He's saying, raid, he's saying raid somebody. And while we're at it, Cuban Benny, my rant is going off on Reddit. And apparently, MPJ has 500 accounts. Um, <laughs> what I would like to do on stream one day is have Cuban Benny and MPJ meet in person for the first time. And just guy hey walk, we have connections with the nuggets we have connections with the nuggets so we could yeah yeah cuban would you would you like to meet mpj in person your your hero your favorite player we can make dreams come true i don't know uh we're gonna raid bet ql uh so actually there's a lady on there that uh she does a lot of TikTok stuff, and she was a big 
she's big with the sons and all sorts of different like uh she's huge on tiktok so go give her some love she has her own podcast she's huge on the podcast platform so we're gonna go give them some love so they have uh it looks like they have a few people checking them out and uh they probably have some good content too i i haven't seen them before but go give them some love so love you guys see you guys on sunday can't wait to be back with you here in the lab love you guys love you guys good night